the National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today, from the Los Angeles Coliseum, it's the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Los Angeles Raiders. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. And by GTE. At GTE, the power is on. As the Olympic flame is being extinguished in Seoul, South Korea, a symbolic lighting of the Olympic flame taking place here at the Los Angeles Coliseum, the home, of course, of the 84 Olympic Games. In the meantime, the Los Angeles Raiders have belonged in the past to Daryl LaMonica, George Blanda, Jim Plunkett, among others. They are now Schrader's Raiders. On the other side, it's the top-rated quarterback in the NFL in Norman Boomer Esiason. The 2-2 two two LA Raiders play host to the 4-0 Cincinnati Bengals. With former Bengals quarterback Ken Anderson, I'm Sam Nover. This kickoff sponsored by Budweiser, the king of ears. And it's the Bengals returning the football. Stanford Jennings shy of the 20-yard line following the kickoff by Chris Barr. The man making the stop was number 64, Ron Brown. So a return of 17 yards by Jennings to get this game underway on a magnificent Sunday afternoon here in Southern California. You look at Esiason's mates, the skill position people, Brooks and Wilson in the backfield, McGee and Brown, the outstanding receivers, and Holman, the tight end. The front line, Munoz and Walter, two outstanding tackles, Reimers, Kozerski, and Brian Blados starting today in place of the injured Max Montoya. Play action for Esiason. Brooks bobbles the football and drops it up around the 22-yard line. James Brooks, the intended receiver. The Raiders' defense, some patchwork being done, to say the least. Not there, however. Long, Pical, and Wise, three excellent down linemen. The linebacking core of King, Matt Millen, the veteran out of Penn State, Robinson, of course, the UCLA All-American, and Rod Martin. This is where the patchwork is being done. The rookie, Price, Mike Haynes, the perennial All-Pro, Russell Carter replacing... An injured football player as well, so they have done some patchwork in the secondary. Second down and 10. And Brooks across the 20 to about the 24-yard line, stopped by Zepp Lee, who has come down and come in as the nickelback. And Kenny, they go to that nickelback a little bit early here with the Raiders. That was very surprising on second down, Sam. The Raiders stayed in the three-man line. Historically, in the last several weeks, they've gone to the four-man line on second down, especially second and 10. So it'll be third down for Cincinnati now, running the ball just shy of its own 25-yard line. Third down and five. The Chicago Bears have taken one team off the undefeated list. The Buffalo Bills fall to Chicago today, 24-3. That is our first final in. Esiason. Great defensive play. The pass intended for Ira Hillary and Russell Carter, who is starting at strong safety and replaces Stacy Turan, Kenny. Yeah, no, the Bengals come out in their four wide receiver offense off the bat, just great man-to-man -man coverage. We're gonna see a lot of that from the Raiders this afternoon. And Timmy Brown now on fourth down, back in single safety, awaiting this punt. Scott Fulhay it off the side of his foot and the ball goes out of bounds and let's see where they mark it so Brown not given an opportunity to run it back only a 15 yard punt by Fulhag and the Raiders will begin here an excellent field position in the neighborhood of the 40 or 41 yard line well, the Bengals, they want to kick the ball away from Tim Brown. And as soon as you start placing the ball towards the sideline, the kicker loses a little concentration and the shank results. And that's going to give the Raiders just tremendous field position to start this football game. They start at the 36 of Cincinnati. And you know Jay Schrader made his Raiders debut Monday night, an auspicious debut to say the least. The offensive line with Graves and Charlie Hanna. First and 10. The Los Angeles Raiders of the Cincinnati 36-yard line. That's Marcus Allen in motion. 
And again to Smith. To about the 32 off his own left side. Running in behind Graves and Hannah. Stop made by Solomon Wilcox, the free safety. And you look at the Bengals, they play the 3 4 with McClendon and Crumry, maybe as good as any nose tackle in the game. The linebacking core, certainly more than adequate. White, Xander, Kelly having a good year, and the veteran Reggie Williams. And their secondary, David Fulcher, is a full blown star at strong safety. Second down, six now for the Raiders. This is Allen. First down and more. Out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. Willie Galt leading the way, providing him with an excellent block. And the man who made the stop was Eric Thomas after a run of 11 yards. But that will be the first first down of the game. Well, Marcus Allen is the main factor in the offense. They get outside to the left of the Bengals. They've been, a lot of teams have been running that way against the Bengals with a lot of success. And the Raiders go right away running to their left and making good yardage. Not a great average for Allen, although he's been a very productive running back this year. Five touchdowns. His next one will tie Freddie Boletnikoff for the all-time Raider leadership in touchdowns. He's two away from leading it himself. So it's first and ten at the Cincinnati 21. On a delay to Smith. And he powers his way down to about the 16-yard line. Stopped by Tim Crumry, the nose tackle, number 69. So the power game, and Kenny, they've gotten the power game back with Smith. Oh, they have to. The Raiders like to run the football. They're featuring Smith a little bit this afternoon. Marcus Allen gets the bulk of their carries. But I think when you look at the Bengals' defense, they're not an extremely large defense in their front line and linebackers. A lot of teams having success running the football against the Bengals. They're going to have to start moving people around to stop the running game. Going to have a pleasant surprise about October 10th when they get Bo Jackson back here, won't they? What a dynamic tandem they'll have then. Second down five, Raiders now at the Bengals' 16-yard line following the shank punt by Fulhay. Allen. And they hold him to about a two-yard gain inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. David Fulcher was there, number 33. So it'll be third down at about two as you look on the sideline. Steve Berline, the backup quarterback for Jay Schrader, just a couple of weeks ago, was running this offense. It's got to be a difficult thing for him to deal with. Well, he was he was playing pretty well. He was under a lot of pressure by a lot of defensive linemen, and it's tough for a quarterback to operate under extreme pressure. So it's third and a very long two now for the Raiders. They go with three receivers. Goal, Lofton, four receivers, both Brown and Fernandez in. From the shotgun. Throws it short to Brown. Get around the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a yard. An excellent defensive play by Wilcox, I believe it was. And that prevents the first down for the Raiders. Well, you look at the Bengals' defense in the first three weeks. They give up a lot of yards in between the 20s. They toughen up in the red zone. And here it's the Bengals coming up with another big hit to keep the Raiders from a first down. They'll have to kick a field goal. It was Eric Thomas who made the play. I beg your pardon. Thomas, the cornerback on that side, making the good coverage. And Schrader forced to take a timeout here. So we have a timeout on the field. No score, but the Raiders with a big decision here on fourth down. We'll be right back to the Coliseum. Sam Nover and Ken Anderson back at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Already we've got drama in this football game. The Raiders have elected to go for it on fourth down. What would you call here, Mr. Anderson? You've been in this position before. Well, first of all, early in the game, I kicked the field goal. <laughs> but if I've got to call a play here, I'm going to give it to Marcus Allen. Is, uh, is Shanahan known as a riverboat gambler? Uh, you, you would think he'd want to get the three points on the board. Well, early, especially you're playing at home, you come off a big one, get something on the scoreboard. But apparently here he's going to elect to go for it, and we'll see if it works out for him. Okay, so here we go. It is fourth down and a very long yard, I would suspect, for the Raiders. Allen is the deep back. He gets the call. First down to the 10. It wasn't that complicated after all, was it? Well, you know, Marcus Allen has good leaping ability in those short yardage situations. And, you know, you just give him the ball deep, he finds a little bit of a seam, and he goes airborne, and it's a very difficult play to stop. Marcus Allen, although not a big running back, a very effective in short yardage. So the Raiders convert on fourth down. And they have it first and ten just outside the Cincinnati 
10 yard line. The Raiders now are four for four this year in fourth down conversions. You talk about a team that's effective in situations like that. Allen to about the eight. Dragged down by Skip McClendon, number 72, and let's check our 10 minute ticker. As I mentioned, one final already. The Bills have fallen, so there are only two undefeated teams. One of them here, the Cincinnati Bengals, of course, the other being the Rams. Indianapolis has come from behind to lead New England. Steelers have problems. Their quarterback, Bubby Brister, went out with an injured finger. And in a dramatic game, the Giants held on to beat the Redskins. We'll have more for you later. Green Bay and Tampa Bay, the Battle of the Bays, in the fourth quarter, and they are tied. Here we are scoreless. It is second down and eight. Raiders at the Cincinnati eight-yard line play action Smith to the one fumble the ball the official rules the ball dead at the one yard line the combination of Schrader to Smith which was so successful Monday night in Denver scoring two touchdowns effective getting to the one and just a little play action pass and sneaking the fullback out into the flat and a quarterback Eric Thomas has to come up and make the tackle but that's a play that's in the Bengals offense it shouldn't catch him by surprise but once again Steve Smith coming up with a big play no, and here it is, and you see it out there. Eric Thomas will come up and make the hit. He hits the ground, fumbles the ball, and as we know, the ground can't cause a fumble in the National Football League. So it's third down, a yard and a half, double tight ends. Trey Junkin, number 87, joins Christensen. Now that's Junkin on the wing to the right. Smith in motion. And a whistle. Allen gets the six, but there was a whistle long before that. And yeah, we got to delay a game here. And a delay of game, the kind of penalty that absolutely kills you. It, you know, in a situation like this, you lose five yards and put your team out of position. I think just Jay Schrader, you get a play called, you struggle a little bit with the formation calls, your new quarterback not used to the system. Maybe it came into play here, Sam. And so along with Jim Tunney, you've met our referee, Ed Fithick, Ernie France, Howard Rowe, Tom Sifferman, Nate Jones, and Pat Millette make up the crew. The officiating crew, they walk off the five. It is third down and six now. Raiders at the Bengals, six and a half yard line. Fernandez in motion. Schrader with good protection, throws it. Intercepted by the Bengals on the deflection. Lewis Phillips takes the ball all the way back to the 29 yard line against Cleveland early in the ball game. He picked up a fumble, carried it into the end zone to get the Bengals started in their victory over Cleveland, and he comes up with a big play here against the Raiders. And one thing the Bengals' defense have done very well is create turnovers, and here it's a tip pass, but Lewis Phillips comes up with his third interception of the year and makes another big play, and the Bengals once again come up with a turnover, and their defense playing tough. Okay, there's Leo Barker. He came up with a tip pass that, that caused the interception. Jay Schrader forcing this pass on third down. The receiver, Fernandez, well covered. Leo Barker steps in front. The ball's up in the air. And Lewis Phillips in the right position at the right time. And that's the Bengals' sixth interception. And here you see Lewis Phillips coming up with his third of the year. And the Bengals' defense off and running. 30-yard return on the interception by Phillips. So the Raiders, a 10-play drive, come up empty-handed. And the Bengals now running from their own 29-yard line. Get the ball out across the 30. Stanley Wilson, the ball carrier, stopped by Rod Martin, the 12-year veteran out of USC. So the Bengals uh, dodge a bullet here early on, and we may go back and look at Shanahan's decision to not take the three points and go for the touchdown. It may turn out to be very big. And you know, when you get that long yard, you know, if it's third or fourth down in inches, you may consider. But that was, you know, a full yard, and that's a tough situation to go with sometimes especially when you take three points, which is going to be a sure thing for Chris Barr. From the 32-yard 30, line, Brooks 21, Wilson 32, the setbacks. Holman in motion. Squeezing through a little uh, hole is Stanley Wilson, and Mike Wise closed it very quickly, the second-year defensive end out of Cal Davis. So the Bengals, rather conservative to start their offense, and there are some things that Sam Weish would like to do against this Raiders defense. Kenny, are there none? Yes, and uh, number one is he wants to get off to a good start with his offense. I think that's why they're going a little bit conservative, very nervous about this game. Because if they get off to a good start, they should have a good game. But 
they're on such an emotional high after winning their first four. It's a new position for a lot of these players. He wants to calm them down a little bit as the game starts. Third down and two. Wilson? Don't think so. Flag is down in the Cincinnati backfield. Wise and Pikel combined to make the stop shy of the first down, I would suspect. But let's check the penalty flag. Penalty and it's against indicated against Cincinnati. Now, what do you do? Do you decline the penalty and make it fourth down, or do you walk them off? I think you decline the penalty and make the Bengals punt right now. You know, with the weapons they've got, Eddie Brown, Tim McGee, don't give them a chance to throw the deep pass and hurt you on a first down. Holding, 67 offense is declined. Fourth down. You're batting 1,000 today, Anderson. Just lucky. <laughs> he should have gone to the racetrack. You know, the, the Raiders very tough on third downs this year. They're only giving up 33.3% conversion rate, which is third in the American Football Conference. A, a very tough team to operate on third down situations. As you uh, get a glance of Sam Weish on the sideline, Scott Fulhage punting to that man, Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown. Fulhage is, Full Hague, I beg your pardon, his first punt, 11 net yards is what they gave him credit for. Brown at the 28. Good coverage by the special teams of the Bengals as they drag him down. Ed Brady, number 55. Leon White was also down there. So there's 6.21 to play first quarter. We're scoreless here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And so Scott Fulhage, whose first punt traveled 11 yards, gets off a 35-yarder, nine yards on the return by Brown. And the Raiders start in excellent field position again, at this time at their own 37-yard line. Smith, 35, the up back. Marcus Allen, the deep back in the eye, and it's play action for Schrader. Along the sideline, Willie Gold, number 83, makes the catch in front of Eric Thomas. And that will be a Raiders first down. 15 yards on the completed pass. And again, we'll check some scores around the NFL on our 10-minute ticker. As I mentioned, the Bills have fallen from the ranks of the unbeaten today. Losing to the Chicago Bears. Houston, Philadelphia, what a shootout there in New England. Still leading Indianapolis. Steelers have lost to the Cleveland Browns and apparently lost their quarterback, Bobby Brister. Atlanta loses to Seattle today. The Seahawks get back on the winning track. The Giants hold on to beat the Skins in the fourth quarter. Tampa Bay has just taken the lead over Green Bay. And in the Players late reviewed. starting games, Continue play. Denver with a 3-0 lead. They had a review of that play. As you see, Phoenix and the Rams tied at seven. The Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals now still the only unbeaten teams in the NFL as we get into the fifth week of the season. And the catch by Galt certainly was legitimate from the 49-yard line. Smith on a dive straight ahead to about the 45. Stopped there by David Fulcher. It's been interesting, Smith being featured in the running game this afternoon. And normally it's been Marcus Allen getting the bulk of the work for the Raiders. And now they come out with Smith up the middle again. Interesting thing about Steve Smith, he had only five carries all of last year for 18 yards and three catches. This year already, he went into this game and carried the ball eight times for 44 yards. Leads the team with 10 receptions, three of them for touchdowns. So he's certainly been a hot target for quarterbacks of the Los Angeles Raiders and particularly Mr. Schrader. Second down. Schrader rolls out, fires in behind his intended receiver, Willie Gold. Eric Thomas with the coverage. It'll be third down now at about six for the Raiders. I get what it appears that you know Schrader forcing the ball once again in on that as Willie Gold comes across the middle. And again, good coverage by Eric Thomas. He's right there, sticks a hand in. Good play. It appeared that Jay Schrader had some running room to the outside if he would have chosen to go that route. Kenny, are the Bengals playing basically man coverage in the secondary? That's when they're most effective. These young cornerbacks play very well in man coverage, but then you got to come with the blitz to put pressure on the quarterback. Third and six. Schrader in the shotgun. We are scoreless here. Five and a half minutes to play first quarter. Going to run for it. Oh, and a great, great play by Will Cox to run him out on the Cincinnati sideline. And that will be shy of the first down. Schrader has run very effectively with the football. And an official is down on the hash marks at the 38-yard line. 
somebody trampled an official and he is down in an obvious may even be unconscious that's a very difficult position for an official being when you're among all that action you got linemen coming at you linebackers running backs people crossing in front of you if you don't see one and get out of the way you're going to get hit we will just have to wait a moment here and find out exactly who it is but somebody has cold cocked an official in the middle of the field That is umpire Ed Fithick. There's Jay Schrader dropping back to throw the football. Schrader's offensive line giving him a good protection. He's got the pocket to step up. There's just nobody open down the field. He pulls it down, and you're not going to outrun Solomon Wilcox. Not many quarterbacks in the National Football League would. But once again, the Bengals' defense come up with a big third down play. And we are happy to report that Mr. Fithick is up and around after being obviously dazed. Jeff Gossett in punt formation for the Raiders and he hits one high and very very short fair catch being signaled and caught by Eddie Brown and so the Bengals will take over very deep in their own territory but there's a penalty marker down so we'll hold it right here 34 yards formation offense on the punt by Gossett and let's see whether the Bengals elect to take it the Line of scrimmage would be inside their own 10 now, and I suspect that they'll have Gossett kick it again. I'll tell you what, we're lucky that wasn't a night game. That ball would have been above any lights in the National Football League. <laughs> that had some air time on it. So we'll have a re-kick here on fourth Illegal down. formation. Line was not up on the line of scrimmage. Still fourth down. An absolutely ideal day for football here in Southern California. 72 degrees, the temperature at game time. As Gossett now will hit this one at about his own 40-yard line. Brown standing at his own 10. Good punt by Gossett. Brown lets it go. And it's into the end zone for the touchback. So the Bengals gain 10 yards following the penalty. There is exactly five minutes to play here in the first quarter. And we're scoreless, the Bengals and Raiders. Sam Nover, Ken Anderson back at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Doug Flutie ran 13 yards with 23 seconds left in the game to give New England a 21-17 win over Indianapolis today. And Tampa Bay got a field goal with 12 seconds left to beat Green Bay 27-24. We are scoreless here as the Bengals start from their own 20. Asias into Brooks. Sidesteps one tackle. James Brooks to about the 34-yard line, met there by Jerry Robinson, the 10-year veteran out of UCLA. But Brooks doing what he does best in the open field, getting the first down. Well, I tell you what, he is just so good for the Bengals. Yeah, I think he is probably the key to their offense, both rushing and receiving. And that time, the Raiders dropping back into a zone defense. You're not going to see a lot of that this afternoon. Boomer Esaias and very patient, lets the linebackers clear out, just dumps the ball to James Brooks in the field, open area, a little move. And James Brooks, great player. And the first first down of the football game for the Bengals. Asias and deep and a great diving catch by McGee at about the 41-yard line. Tim McGee was all alone in the middle of the field. Asias and appeared to have overthrown him a bit, but McGee with a great dive. A 24-yard play, and Asias and has the Bengals on the move. Two consecutive first downs. Tim McGee, great sprinter speed, and we see the Raiders dropping back into a zone defense once again. Tim McGee breaks across the middle of the field. There's nobody there, and that's laying out for a football. When you can stretch out, catch the ball, you've done something. So that vulnerable Raiders secondary now becomes just a wee bit more vulnerable. Eddie Anderson had the coverage there. Give this time to Stanley Wilson, I believe, into the pile for a gain of a yard or two, stacked up by the center of the Raiders' defensive alignment. Lyndon King was there along with Mike Wise. Gain of a yard or two. It'll be second down and eight now for the Bengals from about the 37-yard line of the Raiders, and Chris Collingsworth comes into the game. It appears that the Raiders have changed their game plan a little bit from previous weeks. We see a couple zone passes in a row. We see the three-man line on second downs, which we don't normally see. So the Raiders showing the Bengals something different, but so far in this series, the Bengals have handled it. Quick out, Brown, 
to about the 30 yard line. Eddie Brown stopped by Dennis Price, 38, and Russell Carter, number 29, and he'll be close to another Cincinnati first down. Now the Bengals trying to get the ball to Eddie Brown. He's got such great, great running ability with the football. You see 417 yards so far this season. That's a 27.8 yard average. Tops in the AFC. And again, checking our 10 minute tickers. We mentioned the Bills now 4 and 1. Philadelphia holding on to that lead. They trailed 9 0 early. Pittsburgh loses to Cleveland. Seattle over Atlanta. Other finals. Everything's final now. Green, at least the one of early games. Green Bay loses. The Giants hold on. Now the late starters, Denver and the Jets have jumped out on top with field goals. And the Rams, along with Cincinnati, still the only unbeaten teams in the National Football League into the fifth week of the season. It is good enough for Cincinnati first down at the 21 at the 31-yard line. Asiason across the middle to the 16. Pass complete. May have been Collinsworth who made the catch. Mike Haynes had the coverage, but the eight-year veteran out of Florida, good for the 15-yarder, a man you hooked up with a few times in your day. And Chris Collinsworth back in the lineup. He missed the first three weeks of the game. You see that pass, a little drag slant by James Brooks. Boomer Esiason, a good read. He saw the linebacker, Robinson, going outside with Brooks, had a good feel. It was man-to-man -man coverage. Therefore, the slant will be open. It's Collinsworth for a first down. So they spot the ball right at the 15-yard line. Cincinnati with an excellent drive. Following the punt that went into the end zone, they began at their own 20. They have driven it 65 yards. Wilson is trapped in the backfield and will be brought down. Penetration made by the linebacker, Lyndon King, on the left side. He got a hold of one of Stanley's legs and would not let go and just awaited some help. Well, the, the Raiders very tough in their three-man line to run the football. Their defensive ends, outside linebackers, like to move up the field. If you're going to gain yardage, it's got to be between the tackles. That time, Lyndon King, with penetration, stops the Bengals' running game cold. So the Bengals enjoying some success this year that they haven't really experienced since 1975. That's the last time the Bengals were 4-0 to start the season. They went 6-0 that year in Paul Brown's last coaching season. And the give on the outside. Brooks scampering to about the 10-yard line. It'll come up maybe five yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and five now as Haynes combines with Weiss to make the stop. Esiason has completed four of six passes here in the first quarter. That has only 30 seconds remaining, by the way, in a scoreless game. I tell you, you know, you see the Raiders go to their nickel defense. The Bengals stay in their base defense. I think they want to stay with their tight end two running backs against the Raiders' nickel package. I think that's exactly what they're doing. Third down and five. Plenty of time for Esiason, and he overthrows his intended receiver. Eddie Brown was the man he tried to get the ball to. And so it looks like we'll have an appearance from Chris Barr, who was three for three in the dramatic, I beg your pardon, Jim Breach. Chris Barr, of course, kicking for the Raiders, was three for three in the Denver game, but Breach coming on now to kick for Cincinnati. You know, it's 1980 that the Bengals and Raiders switched kickers. Exactly. Chris Barr cut by the Bengals, picked up by the Raiders. Jimmy Breach released by the Raiders, ended up in Cincinnati. And had I been living in the past, eight years ago, I would have been right. So Breach will attempt from the 18-yard line, a kick at 28 yards. Dirk Schoner to hold. Looking to break the scoreless tie, the kick by Jim is up, and it is good. And so with exactly six seconds to play in the first quarter, the Bengals on a 28-yard field goal by Jim Breach break the scoreless tie and take the 3-0 lead and an excellent drive by Esaias and finally got that offense in gear, Ken Anderson. It was, but Boomer saw a couple of zone defense. The big play in the drive was the pass to Tim McGee against the zone. The Raiders come back down in the red zone, back to their man-to-man -man defense, and then stop the Bengals. So a little chess match playing on back and forth here. Well, 16 days ago, the Olympic flame was lit in Seoul, as you know, in the games of the 24th Olympiad began. Nearly 10,000 competitors from 160 nations participated. They, of course, came as athletes. They leave as Olympians. Tonight, they gather to celebrate these marvelous games and to witness the extinguishing of the Olympic flame, the closing ceremony of the games of the 24th Olympiad only on NBC tonight. There are four final scores in the NFL. Seattle Seahawks 30. And so we will have just about enough time here for the kickoff 
And that kick will come from Lee Johnson, whom the Bengals acquired actually before their victory over the Browns, but they never got word to him that they had claimed him off the waiver list, so he did not show up for that ball game. They finally found him early this week, and he came to camp. He's a young man who has a great propensity for kicking the ball into the end zone. That's exactly what Sam Weish needs. That's it. You're exactly right, Sam. The Bengals feel there are two kickers in the league that can kick the ball into the end zone, Morton Anderson in New Orleans and Lee Johnson. That's what he's here for. Adams, Brown, and Mueller await the kick, and let's see if Lee Johnson know a very poor kick at the 12-yard line, Timmy Brown. And he brings it back across the 30-yard line, so they, they went out and hired Johnson to kick the ball <laughs> in the end zone, and he barely got it to the 12-yard line of the Raiders. Who can figure this? <laughs> Crazy game, isn't it? Three nothing at the end of the first quarter. The Bengals lead it. We'll be back. <laughs> Sam Nover and Ken Anderson at the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Raiders begin now at their own 31-yard line, trailing three nothing. The Bengals with Eddie Edwards 73, Jason Buck 99 now in in the front line. Trader to pass on first down. He wants it all for golf. And he underthrows him, and it's tipped away. Willie Galt, the intended receiver, but Eric Thomas was back there, along with Solomon Wilcox, and the ball just seemed to hang up a little bit, Ken. Well, he threw that ball a long ways, and this is Raiders' offensive football. Throw the ball down the field. That's why they got guys like Willie Galt, Jay Schrader. Here, Eric Thomas plays the ball very well. Good timing as he goes up to break the play. Bengals' quarterbacks have very good speed, I think surprising speed, that'll fool a few teams. And the stats, anything jump out at you that most of the uh, Bengals' yardage is in their last drive to get the three points. I think the Raiders need to get more yards passing as the game progresses. And Mike Shanahan may agree with you because he came out throwing the ball in this series. And he's going to do it again on second down and ten. A middle screen, good defensive play, a fumble, and will it be allowed? It is indeed. It's Cincinnati football. Marcus Allen caught the ball as the Raiders attempted the middle screen. He was hit, fumbled the ball, and the Bengals have recovered. Well, that's what the Bengals' defense has done all year. They're 25th in the league. But Leo Barker coming over, stripping the ball from Marcus Allen, and that's now the 12th turnover the Bengals have created this year. Six interceptions now and six fumble recoveries. The middle screen, there's the ball to Marcus Allen. Good job by Leo Barker coming, going right for the football and stripping it from Marcus Allen. Boy, this defense, as you mentioned, has been efficient in taking the ball away. Esiason comes right out and throws the ball intended for McGee on first down. It was incomplete, but Kenny, as you mentioned, that's 12 times already in a little over four games. The Cincinnati defense has taken the football away from the opponent's offense. You know, right now with those two turnovers, the Bengals plus seven, which should lead the American Football Conference. Sam White's very happy with the play of his defense. Now he wants the offense to get into gear. But last year, the Bengals team minus six on the season. Very poor in the giveaway takeaway stats. So it's second down and 10 now. Bengals leading 3-0. They are operating at the Raiders' 34-yard line. The Bengals have not won a football game by more than seven points this year, but the important thing to them is they've won them all. Asias incomplete inside the 20. And Eddie Brown scrambles and crawls inside the 15 for another Cincinnati first down. Eddie Anderson, the third-year free safety out of Fort Valley State, but Esiason now trying to exploit this rather weak secondary. Well, here Eddie Brown just releases off the line of scrimmage, takes him deep, comes back to the sideline. The key to a play like that, a 19-yard gain, is Boomer Esiason has plenty of time to throw the football. You see Boomer standing back in the pocket, and there's nobody near him. When a quarterback has that much time, any NFL quarterback is, is going to hurt your defense. So the Raiders on the uh, the Bengals on the move again and the Raiders have their backs to their end zone for the second time in the last couple of minutes. Esiason avoids the rush. Open field. A home and touchdown Bengals. As the flow went to the left, he dumped it off to his tight end Rodney Holman and he had nothing but daylight to the end zone. The Bengals come with a play action pass. Rodney Holman blocked before he went out into release. A good job by the Bengals setting that up and Rodney Holman uh, that's his 16th reception on the year. And you can see there is nobody near him. Good deception by the Bengals. That was a good design. Rodney Holman puts the Bengals up now. Hopefully by the score of 10 to nothing if they make the extra point. Hopefully if you're a Bengals fan. Right. And if you're a Raiders fan, it's not hopefully. <laughs> Schonert will hold. Jim Breach will attempt. So the Bengals have now gotten their offense into gear. 
13.47 to play in the half. They have a field goal to end the first quarter and a touchdown to start the second. 10-0 Cincinnati. We'll be back. Today's game is brought to you by Dodge Cars and Trucks. On the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of Dodge. By City Corp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And by United Airlines, airline of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. So once they recovered the fumble, it did not take the Bengals long to stick the ball into the end zone. A minute 13, 34 yards in three plays. Asias in 14-yard pass to Holman for the score. And this ball bounces past Timmy Brown and out of the field to play. It'll be a touchback and come out to the 20-yard line. So Lee Johnson did his job that time and forced the touchback. And so the Raiders will begin at their own 20 as we look at the scoring play one more time, Ken Anderson. Marcus Allen, Steve Smith with the setbacks now with Jay Schrader as the Raiders come out of it at their own 20-yard line. Raiders have been uh, a very slow-starting football team this year. In fact, they had only scored seven points in first quarters of previous games this year and, of course, have nothing on the board today. As we move into the second quarter, turns and gives to Allen for a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Mervin Fernandez, number 86. One of the wide receivers the Raiders trying to employ, and they've got gifted receivers, Kenny. I don't know if there's four finer receivers in the National Football League. You look at Lofton, Galt, uh, Timmy Brown, and Fernandez, and these four burners have put a lot of pressure. I think they have to start turning to those guys and getting the ball down the field. Aren't you really rolling the dice playing man-to-man -man with those guys? Wouldn't the zone be more effective? Yeah, but the Bengals have played man-to-man -man defense better this year so far. Second down and eight. Smith, the lone setback, gets the ball on a delay, a first down, and much more. Steve Smith running over Bengals up near the 40-yard line before Joe Kelly finally knocked him down, the third-year man out of Washington. 16 yards, and has this kid been a great surprise? Was nothing but a blocking back for D.J. Dozier at Penn State. And the, the Raiders' offensive line doing a real good job getting into their men, letting Smith break the line of scrimmage and use his running ability. From the 38-yard line, so the Raiders try to get something going here. Their offense has certainly been stagnant, to say the least. Schrader, complete along the sideline to Fernandez, and he had both feet down in bounds. And that will be perhaps another Raiders first down. David Fulcher had the coverage. But Jay Schrader now starting to get unleashed just a bit. And Fernandez just running a little out pattern, and Schrader using his tremendous arm strength to get the ball there in a hurry before the underneath coverage David Fulcher could react. You know, Jay Schrader is just such a good throwing quarterback. Uh, they've got such great wide receivers. If they have confidence in their offensive line to protect him, I think they'll start throwing the football more. You never had the problem of having to move from one team to another. You were blessed with having to play your entire career with one team at Cincinnati. But what must it be like for this guy in only his second game, having, you know, really been exposed to this offense for three weeks? Well, I think it's terminology as much as anything, getting used to the way they call the football players. He turned away from a blitz by Fulcher and turned a negative into a positive. An excellent move by Schrader as they brought the strong safety David Fulcher when Schrader went back he looked him right in the eye spun the other way and turned it into a short game I that's why Jay Schrader is such a winner he saw him coming all the way you could see his eyes focused on David Fulcher and rather than, than making a bad play happen he turns it into something positive along the sideline Mike Shanahan the youngest head coach in the National Football League just turned 36 was John Elway's coach at Denver Here's another final. The uh, Eagles have beaten Houston 32-23, having trailed early in that game 9-0. Marcus Allen gets outside and fumbles the ball as he's hit, but it's out of bounds. They just strung him out. Running east to west will not get it done. No, it just uh, you, at some point in time, you have to have that cutting lane to turn up. That time, the Bengals' defense doing a good job stringing the play to the sidelines. And you check other games still in progress. The Jets going into the second quarter now. Surprise team in the league. Denver on top of San Diego trying to rebound from the loss of the hands of the Raiders. The Rams are trailing early on. 
and San Francisco leads the Lions in the second quarter. Here it is 10-0 Cincinnati. 11.05 to play first half. The Raiders on the move. Third down and four. Wide open, but a good open field tackle, I believe, by Fulcher on Marcus Allen. And so David Fulcher has done it again. Sam Weiss says about this kid, we only have two legitimate stars on our team, and David Fulcher is one of them. He is so big as a strong safety, over 230 pounds. He's almost another linebacker in there that can move well, and he leads the Bengals teams in tackles as a strong safety. You have to figure where is he in the running game, where is he in the passing game, because he is the key to their defensive secondary. And so while Mike Shanahan gambled early in the game on fourth and a yard and made it, he will not gamble here on fourth and a yard at the Bengals 43 yard line. He's brought Jeff Gossett on to do the punting. And Eddie Brown in single safety. He will drop no farther than his 10 yard line. Michael Martin would normally return the punch for the Bengals. He's been hurt with a little bit of an Achilles problem. Eddie Brown is a real threat back there and he has what all great punt returners like Tim Brown have. He can make the first guy miss when he has the chance. So you've got some electrifying returners in this ball game. Both named Brown. Both wear the number 81. We can't get them confused. <laughs> I confuse Breach and Barr. I'm in real trouble. Fair catch called for by Brown at the 14-yard line, and he had to weave his way in and out of traffic to do it. Good catch by Eddie Brown. 10-0 Bengals. They have the ball back and will return to the Los Angeles Coliseum in a moment. He joined us late. Here is the only touchdown of the football game. And watch this area of your screen right here. You'll see Rodney Holman coming in here, falling down to the ground, the tight end blocking as the play action comes this way, and he just trickles off. Nobody in the picture as the linebackers react up and over. And there you see Rodney Holman getting up off the ground, and that's one of the big keys. If they go down to the ground, it usually fools the defense. We are back live. Cincinnati, that's the only touchdown of the game. The Bengals have the football. Esiason with play action. Throws downfield, and it's caught by Brown up around the 35-yard line. The coverage there by Dennis Price, the rookie, a fifth-round draft choice out of UCLA. But you talk about early baptism. Price had it on Monday night and getting it again today. And here, Eddie Brown going down the field. Great speed, nothing fancy, just going across the middle of the field and catching the ball a little bit behind him. Has to jump for it. Price is there. But again, the key to the play like that, if you're going to throw the ball down the field, your offensive linemen have to give you time to throw the ball. And so far, Boomer Sison's had all day. And Eddie Brown's having himself quite an afternoon. Three catches already. At the 35, the Bengals trying to move the football again, already leading here 10-0, second quarter. 9.22 to play. Quick out. Caught and then dropped by Ira Hillary, number 89, the second-year man out of South Carolina. Russell Carter had the coverage, but I think he did not look that ball into his hands. No, and it was his own defense. Boomer throws it hard, and every once in a while as a receiver, you lose a little bit of concentration. Ira just pulls up on a hitch, ball's right at his head, and you get a little anxious, and you bat the ball right down. Hillary getting a chance to play today because of the injury that Ken talked about to Mike Martin. And so Hillary, uh, it would be in his best interest, I would think, to perform well. Yeah, very definitely so. Six defensive backs being employed by the Raiders now. Third down. Beg your pardon. Second down and ten. Esiason, again the good protection. Throw short intended for Brooks. Out in the right flat. Up around the 38 to 39-yard line. Brooks and Price joined at each other. But the pass was thrown short by Esaias, and now it'll be third down and 10. The first poor pass by Boomer, and you can see him shaking his head a little bit. He said, I should have had that completion. But again, the Raiders, again, coming with tight man-to-man -man coverage. But when they've been hurt, it's been in the zone defense. And again, Sam Weish, who was so maligned last year. A 4-11 and team, a coach who just seemed to dig a deeper hole for himself with each passing week has certainly acquitted himself very well so far this year at 4-0. Esiason has a man wide open, first down and more. McGee into Raider territory at about the 42-yard line, but Esiason is a man who made the play. The Raiders had the good pressure on, 
He escaped the rush and completed the pass for 23 yards. You know, Boomer is a big quarterback. He's very mobile. He's got to move like that for the quarterback to get away. And once he made the first guy miss, he had time to find the receiver open down the field. And you can see Boomer uh, has just been a, a great quarterback over the last years for the Bengals. Greg Townsend, who has four and a half sacks to his credit already this year, is the man who had the pressure on. But Esaiasen, again, turning a possible negative into a real positive. At the 41, back to the ground, Icky Woods to the 35. Woods, who has the only two rushing touchdowns by the Bengals this season, and he got them both last Sunday against Cleveland, Ken. That's right, Boomer size of nine touchdown passes going into this football game. Icky Woods has been their power back for the Bengals. He hasn't carried the ball a lot, but when they get down close to the goal line, he's the guy they turn to. And a star of another sport in uh, attendance today, Irvin Magic Johnson taking in the Raiders. He might make a pretty good wide receiver. I would great hand. And can throw the ball pretty well, too. Of course, of Los Angeles Laker fans. Second down and four. Brooks. Cuts back. Against the grain. 30. And out of bounds. Inside the 20-yard line, Jerry Robinson ran it out. But that's what... James Brooks does so well. We've seen it time and time again as you follow the Bengals. James Brooks hammering it up inside the line. If nothing there, he's got the ability to move along the line of scrimmage and speed to take it to the outside over the off the back of the defense. Uh, and there they had no containment on James Brooks. Here you see him again using just great speed to get the outside. As he outruns Jerry Robinson to the sideline. Averaging 5.3 yards a carry has not hurt himself at all today. And a very productive football player. 42 career touchdowns for Brooks. First and 10. Esiason on the run again. Fires. It's complete inside the five. Brooks again and out of bounds at the three-yard line. Lyndon King and Eddie Anderson ran him out. But Brooks is all over the field. At that time, they just had a little play action fake to James Brooks. And we'll see it here, coming up into the line of scrimmage, faking the ball to James Brooks. He's going to find his way through all the traffic and break to the outside. The key there, Boomer Sison has to buy time. The play takes a while to develop for James Brooks to throw his way through there. And there you see James Brooks at the top of your screen, coming up with a big hit. And Lyndon King, a big linebacker, trying to match Brooks stride for stride. Can't be done. First and goal, Bengals now for three. Woods to the goal line, no signal yet. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Woods got in, so Icky has all three Bengals touchdowns rushing this year, and they lead it 16-0, Kenny. Well, if you notice there, Icky Woods, not much of a touchdown dance in the end zone. He needs to work on it, but he's only a rookie. Sam White's happy along the sidelines as his Bengals scored again. But as we said, they turn to Icky Woods in their goal line situation, just hammering off tackle. The line finds a crease. Brian Blados down there around the end zone. The right guard getting in on the play. I understand Icky Woods has the best ponytail in the league. You can see a shot of it right there. <laughs> Takes a while to get his hair ready for a game. 86 yards in eight plays. Took him less than three and a half minutes. Reach with the extra point. And the Bengals, who are 4-0 and and one of only two unbeaten teams in the league, threatening to blow the Raiders out here at the Coliseum. It is 17-0 Cincinnati. So following the scoring drive, the Bengals' Lee Johnson kicks off to the five-yard line. It's Stephon Adams to the 10. At the 20-yard line, goes down in a pile. At about the 22-yard line, let's look at the run by Icky Woods one more time. His third rushing touchdown in the last week. Nothing fancy by the Bengals' offensive line. They are a huge offensive line, averaging over 280 pounds, just using their strength to get into them, and Icky Woods taking his power to hammer right up in there for the touchdown. And a reminder to our viewers that we will be selecting the Budweiser Most Valuable Player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. There are the stats on the scoring drive, masterfully engineered by Boomer Esiason who is emerging as one of the truly brilliant quarterbacks in this league. Now in his fifth year out of Maryland and big. Has a linebacker mentality, doesn't he, Kenny? Well, you, he loves to play this game. Inside handoff to Allen. It's going to go for big yardage. Wilcox with a saving tackle, or Allen might have been off to the races. I'd say a little misdirection play. Marcus Allen coming in from the left side. And again, 
Los Angeles Raiders coming up with a big play on the ground game. You see Marcus Allen in motion, little spin move, little quick trap, and he's through the line of scrimmage clean. Carl Zander grabs a hold, and there's Solomon Wilcox finishing him off. Gain of 13 yards on the carry by Marcus. And the Bengals have already doubled the total yardage of the Raiders, as you see. Two tight ends now with Christensen 46, Trey Junk in 87. At the Raiders 35, and Schrader trying to get him on track. Don't forget, he trailed 24 nothing at the half Monday night and came back in the third greatest comeback in the history of the National Football League, Ken Anderson. Can you believe that? It was unbelievable. But again, it shows when you've got great offensive talent, you've got a quarterback like Jay Schrader, you've got the weapons to work with, you can score a lot of points in a hurry, and the Bengals can't get complacent on defense right here. Schrader with an entire, what has he got taped? Kenny, you've I'm sure had situations like that. What exactly has he got taped to his arm there? Formations for plays. He knows the plays, but sometimes the formations can be a little bit confusing, and as you see a shot of it there on the inside of his wrist, but that's what they're trying to help him out with as much as they can formations. Second down, 10 Raiders at their own 35-yard line from the shotgun again. Pass time, over the middle, complete, wide open, Tim Brown, he could be gone! Tim Brown. This is one of the most electrifying football players to come into this league in a lot of years, and there are a lot of great football players that come in each year. But he really has the propensity for the to break open a play. Chris Barr, the extra point attempt, and it is good. So the Raiders waited some time, only 5:35 to play in the half. But when they break loose, they break loose with great drama, with great drama rather. And it was Mr. Tim Brown at the receiving end of the pass. They strike very quickly, but again, the key to this play, Jay Schrader had all kinds of time in the pocket, had great line of sight vision to pick out a receiver. As we said, when Tim Brown gets the ball, you better make the tackle quicker. You're not going to catch him. 79 yards in three plays. It took him a minute seven to cover uh, pretty basically the entire field, and the Raiders are on the board. And they have been a much better offensive team in the second quarter than they have in the first quarter this year. In games played thus far, they had scored, as I mentioned earlier, only seven points in the first quarter. As you see Schrader and his backup Steve Berline talking about it. But they have scored 38 points in the second quarters of games played this year. And that's seven, so that's 45. One more angle, Ken. And here's the end zone shot of it. But again, look at the protection that Jay Schrader has finds the seam a great throw into the zone coverage and Tim Brown just using tremendous speed for the touchdown Chris Barr will do the kicking off Brown had a 74 yard punt return called back in that Denver game that would have won it on Monday night but they went on and won it anyway pretty happy young man sure made an impact in this National Football League very quickly native of Dallas Texas here's a kick by Barr it's Jennings to about the 25, maybe the 27-yard line. Stopped there again by Ron Brown, who has become a very good special teams player for the Los Angeles Raiders. So the Bengals will try to answer with just under five and a half minutes to play. It's now a 17-7 football game with the Bengals still in the lead. And it's amazing. A big play like that by the offense sometimes expire, inspires the defense to come up and play a little bit tougher. And certainly the Bengals' offense has had the best of it as far as the offense-defensive matches up concerned. Let's see if the Raiders come off fired up on defense now. From the 26. Esiason dives to the 32-yard line. Malcolm Taylor, the nose tackle, spelling Bill Pickell, is the man who made the stop. But again, Esiason with five yards on the run. And we've got quarterbacks on both sides who have that ability to turn a difficult situation into a plus. Yeah, I wouldn't classify either quarterback as great runners, but I think they've got enough mobility to make a play happen. And certainly, rather than throwing the football away, second and five is much better than second and ten. 
game, a gain of six on the carry, second down and four. Brown in motion. That's Woods. And Icky to about the 37-yard line will be very close to a Cincinnati first down. So the Bengals, who have been so proficient at throwing the football, have gone right back to the ground game here. Taylor again making the stop, and they may measure this one. Well, Icky Woods in the game for Stanley Wilson. I think they want to start getting him into the ball game a little bit more. He was their second-round draft choice from the Battle of Las Vegas, a rookie that led the uh, NCAA in rushing last year, and the Bengals want to work him into the offense gradually because certainly he has great running ability. You talk about a workhorse, 259 carries in his senior year at UNLV. 1,658 yards and 10 touchdowns, and he got the first down for Cincinnati there. It enables them to recycle the downs box. Well, the Cincinnati Bengals offense in a good position now. They're doing about what they want to do. They've been effective throwing the football. They turned to the run for a first down. So right now, the Raiders have to take away something of the Bengals offense. Let's call it the 36-yard line of Cincinnati. Bengals in possession. First down. Brooks. Boomer throws it to him along the sideline. Short yardage gain in the grasp there of Mike Haynes, the perennial All-Pro now in his 13th year out of Arizona State. He's got to feel like a teacher with a bunch of students in that secondary, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, it is. You know, Mike Haynes been a great player in this league for a lot of years, and it's it's a young second. He's the one that has to take charge and control the situation out there. And again, we uh, jump around the league here and get you caught up on the scores of other games with our 10-minute ticker. Game still in progress. Jets have added a touchdown, and their lead has ballooned. Miami out over Minnesota late second quarter. And the Phoenix Cardinals continue to lead the Rams. That would be a major upset in Los Angeles down the road here in Anaheim. On second down, Esiason has a wide-open James Brooks. Runs over Haynes and finally knocked out of bounds by Matt Millen. But another Bengal first down and importantly stops the clock with 319 to play here in the first half. And Esiason is just a master at moving this team in uh, this is almost a two-minute drill for him, isn't it? Well, I mean, he likes to be in situations like this. And the thing that's so encouraging about Boomer is he likes to throw the football down the field. But here he comes with the play-action pass. He looks downfield, there's nothing there, steps up in the pocket and takes the underneath. I'm not so sure that last year he would have taken that throw. He might have forced the ball down the field. Boomer Sison has really matured as a quarterback. At the Raiders 44-yard line, first down Bengals again. Brown motions. Woods running over people to the 30 and might have gone. He broke two tackles. Eddie Anderson just got enough of him to bring him down at about the 30-yard line, or Icky Woods might have had another six points. Well, Icky Woods hammering the ball up in the middle. You see the left or bright guard, Bruce Reimers, pulling on the play, coming up there, not having hit anybody. There's a wide-open hole, and Icky Woods one step, one shoelace away from making a touchdown. And Munoz creamed somebody, 78. Uh, both backside linemen by the Bengals pulling on the little trap and counter play, and Icky Woods just hammering it up in there for big yardage. You'd remarked earlier that Esiason is throwing effectively, Ken, because of the protection. He has only been sacked six times in almost four and a, in four, almost four and a half games now. And obviously the run blocking is effective because Woods is running effectively, as is Brooks and Stanley Wilson. First down. Flag is down. Incomplete. Intended for Eddie Brown and a penalty marker. Dennis Price with the coverage. Against, the Bengals. against Cincinnati. You might be able to see it here. Let's take a look at it. Brian Blados, I believe, is the culprit. Number 74. Early use of the hand, number 64. 10 yards, and still first round. Well, they called it on Kozerski. Watch uh, Blados here. There's... Well, it might have been Kozerski. Well, those offensive linemen, every once in a while, get a little aggressive in there. They don't want to get beat, and it's easy to grab hold up in the middle of that line. You figure, I'm never going to get caught, but there's the yellow flag. So they walk off the 10 yards, and the Bengals now back at their 40-yard line, at the Raider 40-yard line. Six defensive backs, and they run it straight ahead to Woods, and he gets about seven or eight of the yards back. On first and 20, Zeph Lee, who had the big, big interception in the win over 
Denver in overtime is a man who made the stop. Second year man out of USC who ironically Kenny speaking of Zepp Lee was run was a running back for Denver during the replacement games last year. Maybe that's why he's so tough. Two minute warning here in the first half the Bengals on the move again. Former Bengals quarterback Ken Anderson. This is Sam Dover back at the Los Angeles Coliseum. This is not exactly the same offense that you ran when you were a Cincinnati Bengals quarterback, but tell me what you would call this situation. Well, I think they're going to throw the football. They've been very effective throwing the ball down the field. I mean, look at all the receivers who caught passes. Tim McGee, Eddie Brown, Rodney Holman, touchdown, James Brooks. Uh, the Bengals have so many offensive weapons. I look to permit the ball to one of their wideouts in a situation like this. We shall see. Second and 13. Esiason to Brooks, falls down, gets up and runs for another five, and a flag is down. That run will be allowed. He was not touched when he slipped and fell, but as you saw Jim Tunney motion to Cincinnati, the penalty apparently holding against the Bengals. And it looked like it was against Brian Blados, the right guard of the Bengals. Holding, 74, 10 yards, still second down. You're perfect today, aren't you? Well, maybe that's why there was such an open hole for James Brooks to get started. Blados has played very well replacing the injured Max Montoya, and it's a great luxury for Sam Weiss to be able to put somebody into that hole. And here you see Brian Blados has a hold of Howie Long there, and uh, you know Howie Long, a great defensive lineman. Sometimes you have to hold him to stop him. That's the first time we've mentioned Howie Long's name today. It, it just comes to my attention. So somebody's doing a job out there legally or illegally second down 23 Esiason has a wide open receiver at the 15 and out of bounds at about the 12 yard line Stanford Jennings out of the backfield Eddie Anderson finally knocked him out but Esiason finding the open receiver in the seam and he hit Stanford Jennings well Stanford Jennings in there on the wing, and again, Boomer Esiason having all kinds of time to throw the football, steps up in the pocket. Nice job by the line by Stanford Jennings. Again, open in a seam of, seam of a zone defense, and the Bengals can overcome a tremendous deficit here. Third down, extremely long. Only the second catch for Jennings this season. His first one was for one yard. <laughs> this one for 32 yards, and a very big first down. So the Bengals overcome tremendous adversity. Two holding calls, and they get the first down at the Raiders' 12-yard line. A minute 45 left here in the half. Delay. And now another. So the Bengals seemingly trying to self-destruct, but Esiason won't let them. One of the problems you have in the National Football League this year is when the ball is dead, the 45-second clock expires. That time, a deep throw down the field. It takes a while for the wide receivers to get back. That time, the Bengals just used up too much time. The scoreboard clock here in the Coliseum is not working, so we are getting notification of the official time. A minute 46 to play in the half. Esiason with Hall of Fame stats so far today. Looks, looks. And he dumps it off to Collinsworth for very short yardage. Mike Haynes with the coverage on Chris Collinsworth. Gain of just about a yard. They spot the ball at the 15-yard line. It'll be third down now, and about 14 to go for the Bengals. The Raiders in man-to-man -man defense that time as they are inside the 20-yard line, but the big plays have come on zone defenses. That time in man-to-man, -man, they've got tight coverage. And they've got the clock fixed. You can see it inserted at the bottom of your screen. Big play for Esaias and bigger for the Raiders. They stay on the ground at Jennings to about the 10 yard line so they get themselves into position for a breach field goal if that's exactly what Sam Weiss wishes to do here. On a situation like this you want to make sure you get some points on the board and there's plenty of time to go for the Bengals to get a touchdown but you're in such great field position don't do anything to take you out of field position when you've got almost sure three points. Third down and eight the ball is just inside the 10 yard line. Cincinnati already leading here 17 7 trying to add to their margin before the half. Esaias and hit touchdown. He was hit as he delivered the ball to Tim McGee for the touchdown. Big play by Boomer Esaias under extreme pressure. Sam White 
is just a static on the sideline that the Bengals come up in a situation like that. Here you see Boomer Sice, another play action pass by the Bengals, rolling to his right, and there is Mike Wise as he hits Boomer the throw, but there's Tim McGee in the end zone. Now you see Sam Weiss watching, watching, there it is. And he was very worried about this game. He is 0-1 against the Raiders. The Bengals historically have done very poorly, losing 12 of 16 games to the Raiders in both Oakland and here in Los Angeles. But this is another Sunday afternoon. It is 24-7, the Bengals over L.A. We'll be back. Only 21 seconds left here in the first half. And the scoring drive, and again, Esiason using the clock to his advantage. The nine-yard touchdown pass to Tim McGee. And Mr. Esiason now has thrown for 216 yards in the half, Ken Anderson. And when you get the hot hand as Boomer Esiason has, quarterbacks can be devastating. Here you see his concentration, good as he throws to McGee, he gets hit, but he finds Tim McGee, and he's so strong, he's got the ability to get enough on the ball, even while he's being hit. I don't want to take anything away from Esiason's performance, but he is performing against a ravaged secondary of the Raiders, who are playing without three of their starters, having lost Stacey Turan, and of course, earlier, uh, before this uh, game even came about, and in weeks in the past, they have tons of people, 16 on their injured reserve list. So here's the kick now by Johnson to about the five-yard line. Tim Brown to the 25, to about the 29-yard line. And the Raiders will have time for just a couple of plays. And we just got word that James Brooks injured a wrist. He's going to be x-rayed at halftime, and that would be a big blow to the Bengals' offense. Terry McDaniel also on injured reserve. Van McElroy, Stacey Turan. So three of the four starters in this Raiders secondary on the IR list. And it's just extremely difficult to, uh, to defense against a, a, a quarterback of Esiason's ability. You've got to put some pressure on the quarterback. You've got to help your defensive secondary out by putting pressure on Boomer Esiason. Smith 35, Allen 32, the running backs behind. Well, no, Schrader now in the shotgun. There's just Smith back there with him. And it is complete to Christensen. And they whistle the play dead up around the 39-yard line. Todd saying, what do you mean? Nobody touched me. Well, there was contact on the play as he was down on the ground, and that's all it takes. They're not even oh. giving him the completion. That's what the dispute is about. They're saying he did not catch the football. So they bring it back to the line of scrimmage to 29. And Todd says, I've led the Raiders receiving the last three years. What do you mean I didn't catch the football? <laughs> So the clock stopped with eight seconds left here in the half. What do you do here, Kenny? Just say, everybody, run as far as you can, and I'll throw it as far as I can? Well, and you don't want to make a mistake here, first of all, and give the Bengals a chance to get some more cheap points on the football. I think this is the point in time where you, you kind of regroup in the, in the locker room and try to figure out what's going wrong here. You know, talking about Raider receivers, uh, we mentioned earlier the one name we hadn't mentioned in the entire first half was Howie Long. It dawns on me we haven't mentioned James Lofton's name. I don't know whether he's injured or what. They're going to review now the play uh, that you just saw, the pass to Christensen, to see whether he actually did catch the ball or not, as was ruled. Let's see if we can get an angle on it. Did he oh, drop no. it? No. Looks like he dropped it and caught it between his knees. Well, I think the ball hit the ground as it was between his knees and didn't have control of the football. So it looks as if it's a pretty good call by the official. So what about Lofton? Have you noticed him out there today? Well, you know, they just haven't thrown the ball a tremendous amount. Now they're going to have to go to some of those big guns. The only play they made is to Tim Brown for the big touchdown play. And again, the Raiders have so many offensive weapons, they've got to start using them. Schrader thus far has thrown the ball only 12 times, completed seven of them for 105 yards. So you're absolutely right, Ken. They thought perhaps uh, they could run the ball. They wanted to hold it, I think, away from Messiah. And that has not worked. As you look at Mike Shanahan, the head coach with the headsets around his neck, and Steve Berline along the sideline. You know, the Bengals have had 11 sacks this year, but I wouldn't classify them as a defense that you're, you're afraid to throw the football against. And I thought maybe the Raiders would come out and throw a little bit more. And certainly when you're down 24-7, to they're going to be forced into that position. As we, as we saw last week, they don't mind being in that position. They can come back from a big deficit. Here you see that play once again. Ball to Todd Christian. He bobbles the ball here as it goes down between his legs, and there it hits the ground. 
And finally, after a uh, substantial delay here, and they have done a great job this year, I think, in expediting the reviews, this one took a little bit longer than usual, but they have verified the call by the officials on the field. It is indeed an incompleted pass. So it comes back to the 29-yard line. Time for certainly one and maybe two. Schrader throws short of his intended receiver, Willie Gold. And they'll have time for one more and maybe a Hail Mary here from Schrader. But it does appear as if the Raiders will go into the locker room, not down by quite as many as they were Monday night in Denver, but down substantially at 24-7 to to the Cincinnati Bengals. And do they have yet another great comeback in their itinerary? It's tough to put yourself in that hole two weeks in a row, but if anybody can do it, it's the Raiders and their offensive weapons. Greatest comeback in the history of the team. They had done it once before trailing 24 nothing at the half but they did it at home against San Diego and so not quite as an accomplishment as going to Denver Marcus Allen up around the 40 yard line and that will end the first half of play so the Raiders have got some offensive and defensive revamping to do the young man Mike Shanahan will obviously have to review his game plan for this game but I don't know what you can do when you're talking about a secondary that has been so ravaged and so besieged with injury, Kenny. Well, I think you've got to figure out a way to put pressure on the quarterback. They may have to go to the blitz or do something there, but they're going to have to find some way to get to Boomer Esiason. 24-7, the unbeaten Bengals at the half. Our halftime activities will continue in just a moment. And so quickly reviewing the scoring, Jim Breach, a 28-yard field goal in the first quarter, then Boomer Esiason in the second quarter, two touchdown passes. And a 24-7 halftime lead. NFL Live halftime activities will continue in a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Well, in a pregame show, Paul McGuire said it's time for the Bengals to lose one. Not yet. They are 4-0 and looking for 5-0 and looking very good behind Boomer Esiason. They are leading at halftime, as you know, 24-7, the story here. Esiason now leads the National Football League in touchdown throws, 11. Two more today for him. This one goes to Rodney Holman, 14 yards in the first quarter. Icky Woods ran one through, and the Bengals looking awfully good against the Raiders at halftime, Paul. Raiders left their game in Denver. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jay Schrader threw one good pass, mm. and, and after that, Cincinnati, just, they're just going up and down the field whenever they want to do it. Big day for Boomer and the boys. You now, bet. the Jets and Kansas City, the Jets looking for four straight. They have not allowed but one touchdown since week number one. The top defense, the National Football League, and the Jets are leading 10 nothing that game at halftime. And Mark Gastineau continues to do it. You saw him on the pregame show talking about his little motion he does for his fiance. Well, got to do it two more times. Now leads the AFC in sacks with six of them. Two more this afternoon. Elsewhere at halftime, John Elway intercepted for a ninth time this year. Denver is leading San Diego six to nothing. Miami, surprisingly so, 17 to nothing over Minnesota. Dan Marino, two touchdown throws. That game is halftime as well. Phoenix at the Rams. And Phoenix has just taken a 17-14 lead. You know, it's the first time all year the Rams have trailed in a game. That game approaches halftime. San Francisco leading Detroit 10-3. That game at halftime as well. Chicago, big, handing the Buffalo Bills their first loss of 1988. Final score of 24-23. Marv Levy can only do this. There's nothing else to say about his offensive and defensive show. Unless you're a Bear fan, then you loved it. Keep your eye on Jim McMahon. He pitched it out and then watched him throw the block. There he goes. Springs Dennis Gentry, double reverse. 58 yards for the touchdown as the Chicago Bears ran roughshod over a Buffalo defense, which had been awfully stingy the first four weeks. It was 24-3 at halftime, no scoring in the second half. Here's how it went offensively for Buffalo today. Ronnie Harmon, well, try the other way, Ronnie. There he goes. That's not much better. You know how many yards the Buffalo Bills rushed for today? Zero. And Chicago had six sacks as well. Philadelphia trailed 16-0, came back to beat Houston. Final score of 32-23. Big Doug Flutie story in New England. Came in for Tom Ramsey today, threw for a touchdown, ran for the winning score in the final seconds. New England defeated Indianapolis 21-17. Cleveland, an easy win, perhaps a bit surprisingly so, defeating Pittsburgh 23-9. Not too many fans showed up in Atlanta. They were rewarded by their team losing to Seattle. The Falcons are now 1-4. Seattle won at 31-23. John L. William touchdown runs for Seattle. The Giants with the return of Lawrence Taylor. A couple of sacks for him. Giants edged Washington 24-23. 
Tampa Bay defeated Green Bay in an Igwe Buike field goal in the final seconds, 27-24. Hallinier of Houston's been fired. Most of his coaches, too, except for Yogi Berra. Now a station break. Sam Nover and Ken Anderson back at the Los Angeles Coliseum where the Bengals lead the Raiders by a score of 24-7. The interesting thing to note about Boomer Esaias' incredible performance in this first half is the fact, Kenny, that he's thrown the ball successfully to six different receivers. That's remarkable. Well, I think it shows the Bengals have a very versatile offense. They've got a lot of weapons that they can use. All of them are in effect today, and it all starts that we see six different receivers, but it all starts up front. That offensive line has given Boomer Esaias an all-day to throw the football. Well, let's take a look at some of these scoring highlights after a Jim Breach field goal had gotten the Bengals on the board at 3-0. This, Esaias into Holman for the touchdown. And again, Rodney Holman faked the block, rolled down on the ground, got up, and nobody near him. 10-0 here, early second quarter. The Raiders had a drive, could not move the football. The Bengals get it back and give it to Icky Woods. Well, the only running touchdowns the Bengals have had this year have been by Icky Woods in goal line situation. He just uses his powers there to hammer it over. And the only thing that the Raiders have really had to cheer about today, Schrader finally unleashing a bomb to Tim Brown, the Heisman winner. And this is what they're going to have to do the second half, get the balls to the Browns, the Loftons, the Gauls, the Fernandez, and make the big plays if they want to get back in it. And then coming back again, Esiason with his second touchdown pass of the day, both in the second quarter, and this one going to Tim McGee. You know, Boomer having a great afternoon, sits in the pocket, gets hit, throws the ball to Tim McGee, and they've got to find some way to pressure Boomer Esiason. All right, let's talk about what the Raiders are going to do. Mike Shanahan is obviously an offensive genius. He had great success in Denver with John Elway. Uh, he's got a quarterback who isn't really acclimated to his entire offense, Kenny. What can he give him to go with here in the second half? Well, I guarantee he knows the passing game, and that's what they've got to turn to. They've got to go to their wide receivers, get the ball down the field. That's Jay Schrader's strength. That's the Raiders' strength. They've just got to go back to it. And what will the Bengals do defensively? I mean, they know that to play catch-up ball, the Raiders are going to put the ball up in the air. That's a defensive lineman's dream. You put your ears back and you rush the pass, and you don't worry about the run for half. And the one successful thing that Cincinnati has been able to do interspersed in a very successful passing game has been the run game. Tell me about the run game and how it's been so successful and effective for Cincinnati. Well, I think it's a matter of they're throwing the ball successfully. And when you've got defensive linemen, they're worried about stopping the passing game, running up, uh, containing Boomer Esaias, and all of a sudden they're a little loose on the running game. And the Bengals have done a very good job running the football inside against the Los Angeles Raiders. And uh, as you look at Boomer Esiason, let me bring you up to date. He's thrown the ball 20 times in the first half, completed 14 passes, 216 yards, and two touchdowns, no interceptions, has nothing at all, has done nothing today, to certainly hurt his number one overall passing rating in the National Football League. And as you just saw, of course, he's thrown two touchdown passes, giving him 11 already this year. He is a full-blown star, in the words of Sam Weish, as I mentioned earlier in our broadcast, uh, Weish looks at his team as a very good team, one that's comprised of camaraderie and one that, that meshes very nicely. But in terms of stardom, he says, we only have two, David Fulcher on defense and this young man on offense. You know, you talk about Boomer Esiason's great statistics leading the National Football League in passing, and that's off a poor week for him last week, only completing 8 of 23 passes. So Boomer Esiason, when he is on, he is the Bengals' offensive He's such a dynamic quarterback in the National Football League. He's a strong arm. He's got a lot of weapons to work with. And again, I want to go back to that Bengals offensive line today. They've controlled the line of scrimmage. They've handled the Raiders up front. And Kenny, you know, you just have to be wondering what is going through the minds of the Raiders. They were in a similar situation just six days ago, Monday night in Denver, down 24 nothing. Schrader just absolutely took them to the promised land. Are they sitting there thinking he's going to do it again? He can do it again? I think that's exactly what they think. And the Raiders are a unique football team. If you hang around these guys a little bit, they're very loose, they're very confident, they're relaxed. I said, what's the big deal? We're down 24-7. to We've come back before. We know we can do it again. We're that good a football team. The Bengals have just suffered a very serious setback. We have just received word that James Brooks suffered a fractured hand in the first half and will not play, obviously, the rest of the day. And he was an enormous part of their offense. And that is going to hurt the Bengals in this young 1988 football season. I think he may be the key to the Bengals' offense. The things that he does, running, receiving. Uh, sure, you've got a guy like Boomer Esiason, but James Brooks is so effective for this Bengals' offense. 
You're looking at Tim Brown again, who leads the National Football League in kickoff returns. He is flanked by Vance Mueller and Stephon Adams. And this kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Lee Johnson, who put one of four, five, actually, five kickoffs into the end zone in the first half. We'll try it again. He did it this time. Driving Brown eight yards deep in the end zone, and the Raiders are forced to begin at their own 20-yard line, trailing 24 to 7 as we begin play here in the third quarter on a magnificent afternoon here in Southern California. Temperature in the high 70s. And the only thing these folks would like to see more than another beautiful day would be a Raider comeback. Well, we're going to see if they come out in this first series and start throwing the football. Uh, you see the stats, the Bengals just dominating everything. 216 yards passing by Boomer Esaias and 302 yards total offense. Uh, their offense has been in high gear. Gold 83, Lofton 80 are the wide receivers. James Lofton was absolutely silent in the first half. Trader on first down. And incomplete. The official rules intended for Willie Gold. Ball hit the ground. It'll be second down and 10 now. The Raiders at their own 20. And again, Willie Galt just just tremendous speed. You see him get off the line of scrimmage against the bump and run by Eric Thomas. He tries to stop it, come back to the football. The pass just a little low. It hops up there. You can't catch the ball on one bounce. Taking another look at it. Jay Schrader getting a little pressure now. As we said, the Bengals don't have to worry about it. That's Reggie Williams coming in to get a hit on Jay Schrader as he's throwing the football. Andy Parker, number 85, in it tight end now for the Raiders, the five-year veteran out of Utah. Todd Christensen is up. And the two setbacks behind Schrader on second and ten. Intercepted by the Bengals as he tried the middle screen intended for Marcus Allen. And there is your star, David Fulcher with the interception. Again, David Fulcher read the play. That's the third time the Raiders have gone to the middle screen. David Fulcher seen, has seen it, and he sniffed it out. Here you see Jay Schrader dropping back, waiting for the screen to set up. There, David Fulcher locked in on Marcus Allen. He's right there to make the interception. And we've talked about it before. The Bengals' defense has been a big play defense this year. First interception by Fulcher of the year and the third turnover by the Raiders in the game. It appears that Fulcher was locked in on Marcus Allen. What a great read by that young man. The strong safety, David Fulcher. And Jay Schrader having some difficulty here in his debut before the home fans in L.A. Give is to Stanley Wilson, number 32, the four-year vet out of Oklahoma. Rod Martin is the man who made the stop. A gain of about four yards on the carry. It'll be second down and six now for the Bengals, who are absolutely threatening to break this game wide open. I mentioned, however, they will play the second half without James Brooks. And all he did in the first half was catch the ball four times for 49 yards, run it three times for 28, 77 yards in total offense. And that's a big player to take out of your offense, and the Bengals are going to miss him. My, oh, my. Second and six at the 12. Play action. Esiason throws back to Stanford Jennings, his running back, to about the eight-yard line. Matt Millen had the coverage and made the stop. It'll be third down and about two now for Sam Weish and company. Again, Boomer Esiason making a good play. He's under pressure, but finds something good to happen. It's not a close completion. There's Boomer Esiason, great poise, retreats. That's how he long coming in as he gets a shove on Boomer Esiason. But again, makes something positive happen out of a negative situation. And you set this game up, Ken Anderson, by saying the Raiders had, had to have pressure on Esiason to take the pressure off their secondary. They have not done that today at all. Not at all today. Third and two. Dickie Woods for just a couple of yards. Stopped there by Jerry Robinson. He will be very close to a Cincinnati first down. I tell you, turnover is a key. Mike Shanahan can't be very happy this afternoon. The way his team has played two years in a row, or two weeks in a row, and now to come out and start the second half on a turnover with the Bengals on the five-yard line. And the irony about this season for the Raiders thus far, as you look at their giveaway-takeaway ratio, the Bengals came in as the best in the AFC. The Raiders not far behind. And last year, the Bengals minus six for the season. Actually, nine leads the entire league, the Rams. First down, Jennings. Oh, almost got to the goal line. 
touchdown. An official on this end is signaling touchdown. The other end, there was no signal at all, but Jennings crossed the plane of the end zone. And the Bengals offensive line with a great surge up the middle, and we see Stanford Jennings playing a big part with the injured James Brooks. And here you see the low angle of the shot. Nothing fancy about it, just the Bengals offensive line, Brian Blados getting a big push there. Stanford Jennings breaks the plane of the end zone with the football, touchdown Bengals. Kenny, this is so out of character for the Cincinnati Ball Club this year, not in the respect that they're winning as Breach tacks on the extra point, but the fact that they're blowing a team away. They have won by the skin of their teeth a couple of times, but this one has become a laughing matter. We'll be right back. Today's game is brought to you by Honda, who invites you to test drive the Accord LXI four-door sedan at your local Honda dealership today. Buy extra gold in bottles and cans. It's new, it's draft. And by USFNG. USFNG covers the USA. So the Raiders down 31-7, looking for another mile-high miracle. And Tim Brown carries the ball back out across the 20-yard line, so the Raiders will go from there down 31-7 in this game as we look at the last touchdown. Again, you see the Bengals' offensive line dominating. Stanford Jennings hammers it up in there, and there you can see him reaching over, extending the ball for the touchdown. All it has to do is break the plane of the goal line as we see the, the shot right from down the goal line. And there goes the ball. Stanford Jennings, touchdown. Well, this huge Bengal offensive line certainly has found... Uh, the Raider defense to its liking. I mean, Joe Walder goes 290. Blado's in there at 295. Munoz at 280. They are just monsters. From the 21-yard line, Schrader now with Allen in motion. Has he got another miracle left in him? Throws it for Galt and overthrows him at the Bengal 40-yard line. Pass intended for Willie Galt, and not even a man of his world-class speed could catch up to that one. Well, what Jay Schrader has to do right now is not take this whole thing on his own shoulders. The quarterback is not going to make it happen by himself. Don't force the big plays. Let them happen. You've got to take it one touchdown at a time to bring yourself. You know you've got the offensive weapons, but let's just not make any more mistakes. Let's calm down a little bit, and let's try to get the ball to our wideouts. Shanahan was quoted after the game as saying, you know, I wish I could tell you that I gave him a Newt Rockney speech, but I didn't. I just told him to take it one play at a time. That's the only way you can play this game, down 7-6 to six or down... 90 to 6 you got to play it one play at a time i know it's over it's an oversimplification but they can't get it all back in one throw first down up around the 34 yard line good catch by andy parker the tight end out of utah so the raiders now get a first down get some breathing room and most importantly get some room with which to work andy parker coming off as a tight end now finds a little hole in the bengals defense jay schrader spots him Drills them with the football. Those are things they have to do. Let's get a couple first downs on the board, get our offense rolling again. And this is the time as a player, it's gut check time. I mean, am I going to go out here and play hard, or am I going to fold in a situation like this? You find out about the character of your football team. The two interceptions have positively killed him here in this ballgame. Straight ahead on the dive, Marcus Allen for a couple of yards. Todd Christensen is sitting on the bench below us here, Ken Anderson, with his helmet off. I don't know whether he's been injured or what, but Andy Parker is the tight end at the moment for the Raiders. Well, the Bengals don't want to get complacent in a situation like this as we see a shot of Todd Christensen. Uh, they've got to continue doing the things that gave him this lead. As soon as they relax, that's when you become in trouble as a football team. Willie Galt, Tim Brown, James Lofton, three wide receivers. Second down at about six now for the Raiders, trailing 31-7 with all sorts of time left. Early moments, third quarter. Intercepted again. David Fulcher drops the ball. The scramble is on, and I don't know who's got it. I believe the Raiders may have it back again. Tim Brown is holding the football, but whether he was the last man to legitimately have the ball Fulcher had the interception, his second of the day, in fact, his second of the quarter. But let's see who they give it to. Well, Jay Schrader just makes a tough throw. Down by contact, Bengals football. As you see Jay Schrader in the shotgun dropping back. Just makes a poor throw, over, tries to look off, throws it over Tim Brown. There is David Fulcher in the right spot at the right time. Drops the football, kicks it. There he goes. 
Ooh, I don't know about that call. They may say that he was down on contact. David Fulcher I'm talking about. There's the kick. Now he'll recover the ball, but does he have possession of it before it is pried loose? They are going to review this one, obviously. As you see, both Charlie Hanna and Tim Brown, and now referee Jim Tunney talking with Sam Weish, and I believe the Raiders are going to get it back. It never appeared that David Fulcher had control of the football. David Fulcher just loses the football. There's nobody near him. He's swinging the football, wasn't protecting it, and it comes loose. That ball appears to be loose the whole time. Now, if so, they'll have to spot it where Tim Brown recovered the ball. That is Jim Tunney in the white hat. What else? Referee <laughs> white hat this year. The good guy. Still a waiting word on their decision. Well, it's extremely important to the Raiders, obviously. I mean, they've got an opportunity now. If they get the football back again, they will be in good field position to carry on with their drive. If they give it back to the Bengals at midfield, nursing a 31-7 lead, that Boomer can do anything he wants with the ball, Ken. Oh, yeah, he's running the ball effectively. He's throwing it. He's got all times, kinds of time to sit back in the pocket. The Bengals offense clicking on all cylinders. Don Anderson is the communicator. Bill Fette is the replay official. And Don Anderson on your left now will communicate the decision of Bill down to the field. And we will wait as you do for the decision. The Raider fans becoming a bit impatient, and rightfully so. This has taken particularly long here today. And, and here's Tony. So the replay confirms that the Raiders, in fact, did recover Fulcher's fumble after he had intercepted the pass by Schrader. It is a net yardage gain for the Raiders, but more importantly, they have it back. First down at their own 45-yard line, and they can continue on with the drive. I was about to tell you that the Raiders have had three drives this game that have lasted 21, 22, and 23 seconds. <laughs> and this one would have been under a minute had they turned it over. Allen in motion. Takes the inside handoff. Vance Mueller was the other back there with him. But they give on the inside handoff to Marcus Allen for a couple of yards. He's stopped there by Reggie Williams, number 57, among others. Well, plays like that have a chance to break for big gainers when you've got a defensive line that is looking for the pass, rushing upfield, the misdirection, trapping-type game has a chance to spring Marcus ellis Loon. Todd Christensen, we are told, is out for the ball game, but exactly what has prompted that, I can't tell you. He's obviously been injured. Steve Smith now joins Allen in the backfield on second down at eight. Smith 35. Schrader. Single coverage on goal. Intercepted by Eric Thomas. Down he goes at the 15-yard line. And that will be the fifth turnover of the day. Marcus Allen involved here back of the line of scrimmage with a little bit of pushing and shoving with one of the Bengals. But the and there you see Jay Schrader exchanging pleasantries with one of the Bengals, namely Lewis Billups. But they're getting on Schrader's case pretty good here, I, I suspect. Well, you know, once again, the ball a little bit underthrown as Eric Thomas makes the big play. Willie Galt going down the field. Eric Thomas in good position. He's running with the ball underthrown. Gives Eric Thomas a chance to come back. And that's a good interception by a defensive back. A tough catch. Fourth interception against Schrader. Fifth turnover of the day by the Raiders, who are down by 24. And so as you look at David Fulcher, who has dislocated the ring finger on his hand but will return, I will tell you that Eric Thomas has his third interception. Fulcher has two today, and Lewis Phillips has his third of the season as you look at Eric's first of the afternoon. Again, good position on Willie Galt, and again, this young Bengals defensive secondary has done the job making the big plays this year with the interceptions. And uh, they're young guys. They only average two and a half years' experience in the NFL, but coming up with the big plays. Bengals trying to go 5-0 and on the season. One of only two unbeaten teams still in the league, and the other one, the Rams, are in trouble just down the road in Anaheim. 
ninth straight completion for Boomer Esiason. And out of bounds goes Stanley Wilson, way up around the 48-yard line. Mike Haynes made the tackle, but the Bengals are just doing everything and anything they like to this Raider defense. Well, I think it's interesting the Bengals come out on that play, throwing the football, a very safe pass. Boomer trying to get Stanley Wilson to flat. There, Rod Martin leaves them, and Stanley Wilson all along, but they're not pulling in their horns on offense. They don't want to get lulled to sleep here, get too lethargic. They're going to do the things that have made them successful, and that means continuing to throw the football, they're going to do it. 9.45 to play third quarter. The Bengals in just complete command of this football game. Esiason has completed nine consecutive passes. Stays on the ground this time, gives to Wilson. And Stanley barrels in to about the 47 or 48-yard line. Malcolm Taylor is the man who made the stop. And now I would suspect, although you never know with this Bengal offense, Kenny, that Weish would like to go to work on the clock somewhat. This game is an eternity now. Well, and, and the longer that, that there is on the clock, the better opportunity Schrader has of bringing his club back. Sure, and with the success they've had running the football with that big offensive line, I think he would like nothing better than for that big offensive line to take charge, continue to do the job they've done, run the football, use up the clock. Remarkable job by the Bengal offensive line today. Munoz, Reimers, Kuzerski. Blados, Walter, I mean, you just haven't heard Piquel and Long in any play. They just have been so conspicuous by their absence. Jennings darting through across the 50 into Raider territory and maybe close to another first down. Greg Townsend made the stop along with Rod Martin, but for all intents and purposes, the offensive line of the Bengals has just wiped out that highly respected Raider front seven. I think that's been the story of the game, and certainly the Bengals have had their share of big plays using their big weapons, but the Bengals' big offensive line has allowed them to do all those things. Dan Marino getting unleashed in Miami today, just beating up on the Vikings, and look at this, the Rams in serious trouble now in the third quarter. The Phoenix Cardinals up by 10, and the 49ers apparently having no trouble with the Lions. If you missed it, the Buffalo Bills beaten by the Bears earlier today fall from the ranks of the unbeaten. And then there were two, and after today, there may be only one. And you're looking at maybe the only unbeaten team in the NFL after today, the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, you talked about it earlier, Sam. Uh, the Bengals haven't blown anybody out this year. I think they've been waiting for that day to come where their offense finally gets into high gear, and it's happened this afternoon, and the defense comes up with the turnovers. They, they finally put a good football game, at least two halves together. And of course, the second half is not done. A lot of things can happen yet. But the Bengals have played their best game by far of the year. Kenny, in your many glorious years in Cincinnati, and of course you, you got to a Super Bowl, you didn't win it, but you got there, you heard it year after year. The Bengals have more first-round draft choices on their roster than any other team. This year is another case in point. The Bengals have nine. That doesn't include Boomer, who was, by the way, a second-round choice. And, and they just, you know, really, for, for all intents and purposes, have not been nearly as good as people think they should have been. Well, I think, you know, they've been drafting heavily on defense. Their offense has been good with their offensive line led by Anthony Munoz, the Boomer Esiason, the Chris Collinsworth. But now they're finally their defensive personnel is catching up. First and 10 at the Raider 46-yard line. Brown in motion. Dickey Woods caught in the backfield. Russell Carter. Five-year vet out of SMU forced into action today because of the injury to Stacy Turan for a loss of a few yards. And one of the few times the Bengals have had negative yardage on a play today. Again, Russell Carter, uh, a big guy, 6'2", 200 pounds, although they're in the nickel defense. He's almost a linebacker as such. That time played the run very well. So it's second down and 13. The ball back at the Los Angeles 49-yard line. Tim McGee, 85, is split left. At the bottom of your screen, number 81, Eddie Brown. Ten passes complete in a row for Esiason. This one to Stanford Jennings, down around the 27-yard line of the Raiders. Dennis Price had the coverage, the rookie out of UCLA, but that's 10 straight for Esiason. Again, Stanford Jennings coming out of the backfield from his halfback position. One-on-one -on -one coverage Workout, makes the move, and Boomer Esiason is on the money today. If you exclude the replacement games of last year, Boomer Esiason took every snap, offensive snap, for the Cincinnati Bengals in 1987. Okay. He is extremely durable, excuse me. Exactly what I was going to say. He doesn't get hurt. 
Wilson to about the 21 yard line for six quick yards. And the Bengals now just have everything their own way. The clock is moving, possessing the ball in Los Angeles territory and enjoying a lovely 31 to seven lead. I think you can almost sense the Bengals smelling the kill. They've got a little taste of blood in them. They haven't had it yet this year. I think they would really like to close somebody out. Sam Weish's greatest concern, Kenny, coming into this game was what? The fact that they haven't played well against the Raiders? Well, getting off to a fast start, he knows he's got a lot of weapons, but his team need to play well early to gain confidence, which they certainly did. Under six minutes to go third quarter. Second down, three. Wilson bounces off one tackler, tries to get outside. Good defensive play. Eddie Anderson just rode him out on the near sideline. And that will be close to another Cincinnati first down. The one thing he didn't want to do was go out of bounds, though, and stop the clock. Oh, you want to keep that thing moving as much as you can. But again, you see Anthony Munoz, Bruce Reimers pulling, Stanley Wilson cutting up inside. Uh, just good offensive line play by the Bengals. And Stanley Wilson gets taken for a ride out of bounds. And it was good enough for a Bengals first down as they spot the ball just outside the 16-yard line. 31-7. The Bengals lead it. Boomer Esiason just having a whale of a day in the end zone. Incomplete intended for Jennings. And that breaks Esiason's string of 10 consecutive completed passes. Dennis Price had the coverage there. I was talking a moment ago about 1982. The Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl. A horrible first half for Ken Anderson and company, but you made a dramatic comeback. Here's an NBC flashback for you. There's my partner, Kenny Anderson. Goes back to pass, keeps it. Touchdown, Ken Anderson. You remember that? Right? Yeah, was back in my younger days when I could still run. Almost came back against the Niners, didn't you? It was an exciting moment in my life, I'll tell you that. Pontiac Silverdome, 1982. Here's Esiason again. Wilson. For a couple of short yards. Five and a half minutes to play third quarter. Mike Wise is the man who made the stuff. This has got to be a wonderful homecoming for a number of the Bengals who were born and raised in this area. David Fulcher has got a Los Angeles connection. Joe Kelly out of Washington, but he was born and raised around here. Max Montoya played his college ball at UCLA. Anthony Munoz, of course, at USC. Mike Norseth is a, is a Los Angeles kid, although yeah. he's not dressed for the game. You know, especially for guys like Anthony and Max to come back and play in the Coliseum is always a special feeling. Second down seven. At the 14 of the Raiders. Well, they're not bashful, are they? Throws it, completes it to the nine-yard line. Tim McGee, the reception. Ron Fellows, the veteran. Eight years out of Missouri, former Dallas Cowboys, the man who made the stop. A little surprised that they're throwing as often as they are. Well, or are those more possession passes? Well, you know, it's third down, and certainly you're going to come out and throw the football. You want to get the first down. They still want to score some more points. They don't think this game is over by a long shot. It's just the ball coming right at you. And Tim McGee doing a good job of holding on as Ron Fellows makes the tackle. Boomer has spread the wealth today. Seven different receivers. They have doubled the Raiders' yardage almost. And if they complete this drive, it'll be darn close. Eight yards away. Fourth down and one, they're going to go for it. Have we a turning point? No. Stanley Wilson spins to the two. Great extra effort by the youngster out of Oklahoma. By fullback proportions, he's not a monster. At 6-1, about 208, but he just continued to drive and got the first down and set him up in great great position here for the touchdown. Again, Stanley Wilson, not a big fullback, just over 200 pounds, but again, good speed, durability, more power than you would think from a guy his size. So the ball spotted right at the two-yard line. First down, three and a half minutes to play. Great drive by Esiason. He's just eaten into the clock here. This drive has been, if I remember correctly, they got the ball with something over nine minutes to go. So this thing is going on six minutes. Wilson, the dive to the goal line, no signal. The Bengals signaling, but nothing by the officials as they unpile. And they will spot the ball just shy of the goal line. I always like those offensive linemen telling the coaches how far it is to go with their hands. You know, it may be a yard and a half, but it's always six inches to them. Oh, you quarterbacks used to do that, too. <laughs> Don't blame it all on the offensive linemen. 
sure in 16 years you made uh, you made two yards look like six inches. Only when you want to go for it. Second and goal. Would it be Woods? No, it's Wilson. He gets the touchdown. The first rushing touchdown not scored by Icky Woods this year. Well. You hate to belabor the point, but again, the Bengals' offensive line totally controlling the line of scrimmage. Sam White's congratulating Boomer Sisley comes off Stanley Wilson. And here we take another look at it. Coming out of the eye formation, hammers it right in there, and he's in easily. He didn't even have to jump. And you can hear the boos from the Raider partisan, and many now start to head for the yeah, exit. 2.53 to play third quarter. They don't have a lot of patience out here in Tinseltown. 14 play, 85 yard drive, seven minutes on the clock. What a masterful drive by Esiason and that offensive unit. Breach with the conversion. And we'll look one more time, Ken Anderson. As we take it from behind Boomer Esiason, nothing fancy about this say. It's Icky Woods leading up with the lead block. Stanley Wilson goes in and scores. Bengals score again and lead it 38 to 7. Sam Nover and Ken Anderson back at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Here is the kickoff by Lee Johnson. Tim Brown at the two-yard line. 20 to the 30. Oh, he's unbelievable. To the 38-yard line. The National Football League's leading kick returner, and he has had a workout today, hasn't he? Well, he's, he's had a lot of kicks. He's already turned one this year, 97 yards. He is a threat anytime he touches the ball. Jets continue to be the surprise team in the NFL, leading Kansas City again today. Denver hanging on to that lead at San Diego. And there's the shocker of the day, perhaps. The, the Dolphins just doing the Vikings in. No, that's a bigger shock. Phoenix leading the Rams at Anaheim, just down the road here. And San Francisco still leading Detroit, although the Lions got a field goal. At some point, we'll get you caught up to date on all the 1 o'clock finals of the early games. Raiders begin at their own 39-yard line. Schrader in the shotgun. And a miracle today would be an understatement if he can bring this club back, shy of his intended receiver. Intended for Marcus Allen. 2.36 to play in the third quarter, and the Bengals have just done everything right despite the fact they have never won a game against the Raiders here on the West Coast. Uh, seven times, but again, the Bengals still pressuring Jay Schrader. You see Carl Zander coming around the corner there, Scow, uh, David Grant, rookie defensive lineman getting in to hit him as he throws the ball, and that's been one of the differences. The Bengals have had all day to throw, but not the Raiders. Schrader only 9 of 21 on the day, four interceptions. And the one touchdown pass to Tim Brown. Second and ten. This is Allen. 45. Got the midfield and has the first down. In the grasp there, Carl Zander, number 91, the inside backer. But that'll be a Los Angeles first down. Bengals defensive line looking to pad their sack stats today as they rush the passer and the draw effective as Marcus Allen goes slithering through. Carl Zander brings him down. You know, the one thing that in their heyday, the Raiders say what you want about them, but they play some nasty football. They're a football team that used to overcome tremendous penalty disadvantages. That is not the case of this Raider makeup today. First down, Schrader, incomplete in behind Willie Galt, the intended receiver, and Galt looking for some interference, and there will be none. Lewis Phillips had the coverage. As I started to say, the Raiders used to always have more penalties than their opponents. This year, in fact, their opponents have been penalized 34 times for 320 yards, and the Raiders only 30 penalties for 227 yards. They are not the nasty Raiders anymore, no, I don't think. I don't mean to give the inference that penalty yards means nastiness, but I think it's a situation the Raiders don't intimidate anybody anymore. Uh, you know, you always came to play in their home park you know they were going to be a real tough ball club, and there, there's that intimidation factor. You just don't see that anymore. The roar you just heard was the announcement by the PA announcer that the Rams were losing. Of course, misery does love company, doesn't it? Flag is down, complete to the 35. Allen fumbled the ball, but after he hit the ground, the ground caused that fumble. There would be very little question of that, but let's check the penalty marker. I count two of them, in fact, down. Now it's pointed out to me that three are down. <laughs> I better stop looking out there. 
Oh, that's right. And You're about the same age I am, and the eyes go quickly. Well, you know, we have delayed action in the truck. First, our producer, David Stern, sees it, then our director, Billy Jack Simon. Number 66, offhand, goes offset by Harvey, number 98, Houston. Offset, replay, second down. So we'll replay the down. Quarterback comparison, you want one? You couldn't find anything more diametrically opposed. Esiason has had a dream day completing, I'm not great at math, but that looks like about 67% of his passes. I'll buy that. On the other hand, Schrader's had a nightmare with the four interceptions. Second down, 10 Raiders, right on the midfield stripe. Motion junket, and Schrader's on the move. Fires downfield, it is incomplete, intended for Tim Brown on the night sideline. Let's go to NFL Live in New York now for an update. Okay, thank you, Sam Nova. At the Meadowlands in New Jersey, Johnny Hector for the Jets. Early fourth quarter, fights in for a second touchdown of the day. The Jets now lead the Chiefs 17-10. to 10. Let's go back to Sam and Kenny Anderson. Thank you, Len Berman. We have a penalty flag down here, and this one uh, is still being discussed on the field as you see our score. I believe he called, he was a little muffled, but I think he was tripping called against number 68, Bruce Wilkerson. A call you don't see a lot of the National Football League, but a lot of the interior line play. When you're getting beat, you try to stick your leg out. And it happens. And obviously it's going to happen today for the Raiders. When things are going bad, yeah. everything That's goes bad. Murphy's down. law, isn't it? A minute 38 to play in the third quarter. A 38 to 7 Bengals lead. If you've just joined us, you have missed as close to a perfect football game as a quarterback can play. Boomer Esiason. But again, in the Raiders' defense, they are playing with an absolutely depleted secondary. Downfield, Brown had it in his hands and dropped it. And who was downfield covering Jason Buck? Defensive lineman dropping Number off. 99. Second year man out of BYU trying to run stride for stride with Timmy Brown. Jason Buck playing linebacker. You see Tim Crumry faking in there. He's dropping out too. And there's Jason Buck running with Tim Brown. Doesn't look too bad for a big guy running out there. And he put it right on the money in Brown's hands on an excellent defensive play to break it up by Solomon Wilcox. As you see, Jason Buck playing linebacker in this defense, turns and runs with Tim Brown. He says, please give me help. He's going to beat me soon, and Solomon Wilcox comes over to give out that help. Schrader has thrown six straight incompletions on third and 20. Maximum protection as he keeps his tight end in. He's still running. Fires it, incomplete. Pass intended for Tim Brown at the end of the chain, which was a long way away. And the Blue Birds are out in force here in Los Angeles as Jeff Gossett comes on now on fourth down. And the Raiders trailing 38-7. What have you done for me lately? Well, last week he was a hero. This week, actually, Monday night, he was a hero. Today, of course, something different. It's no different here than anywhere in the National Football League. When you're getting beat this bad, people are going to boo. You have to expect it as a player. Eddie Brown in single safety awaiting the punt at his 20-yard line. Driving him back to about the 16. He's not exactly Tim Brown, but he is no slouch. Eddie Brown has great speed. And he's finally run out on the near sideline as he crosses the 25-yard line. So a minute 12 left here in the third quarter. The Bengals have everything in control. Thank you. 38-7. So I'm sure we're going to see Turk Schonert, who is the backup quarterback at some point in this game, as a minute and 12 is left in the third quarter. You know, a tough decision for a coach to make, you know, when to take your quarterback out in a game like this, whether it's for the Raiders or for the Bengals. I think Mike Shanahan's feeling is here that we, Jay Schrader needs all the work in our system that he can get, so we're going to leave him in there. I'm sorry, Kenny, what did you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't, oh. I wasn't listening. A minute 12 to go, third quarter, 38-7 Cincinnati. The sights are always good in L.A. I'll say that again.
So the Bengals still going with their first team offense. Brown and McGee, the receivers. And the give is to Stanley Wilson, number 32. Goes over the 30-yard line to about the 33. Let's check the complete scoreboard now. The NFL gets you caught up to date. These are the early finals. Buffalo falling from the ranks of the unbeaten. Philadelphia came from 9-0 down to beat Houston. Indianapolis loses on a late run by Doug Flutie. The Steelers lose Bubby Brister and the football game. Seattle over Atlanta, 31-20. Also final, the Giants held on to beat the Skins. They came back on two touchdown passes late. Not enough for Washington. Tampa Bay wins on a late field goal. And we'll get the others in a moment. Second down. Just lofted that ball out in the flat. It was complete, shy of the first down. Again, it was Stanley Wilson, the receiver. Now the game's in progress. Let's check out the rest of them for you. As Len Berman just reported to you, the Jets have gone on top of Kansas City. Denver still leading. Miami still blanking Minnesota. That's a shock to me, Kenny. And Phoenix with maybe the biggest upset of the day at Anaheim. The previously unbeaten Rams and nothing changed on the Niners and Lions. Here it is 38-7. Cincinnati with the biggest blowout of the afternoon. I think we expected a lot of offensive fireworks this afternoon, which we're certainly getting from Cincinnati. I expected it from Los Angeles as well. And we're just not seeing the one big play to Tim Brown has been the only play they've made offensively. And as you see, referee Jim Tunney indicates still a, a foot or so shy of the first down marker. So Sam Weish will have an opportunity here for one running play, perhaps, to kill the end of the third quarter. Kenny had been in games on both sides of the ball. They're 38-7 at the end of three quarters. If you're on the upside, is it difficult to maintain your concentration? A little bit. Things are a little bit more jovial in the huddle. You're talking about a little bit of stat work here. You know, give me the ball. I need a, a couple of extra yards. Uh, you know, I think the Bengals just don't want to get complacent in a situation like this, though. Well, they started the 45-second clock. Cincinnati does not have to run a play. We have come to the end of the third quarter here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Bengals leading the Raiders 38-7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. With Ken Anderson, Sam Nover back at the Los Angeles Coliseum. This game I know is being seen in a lot of cities along the uh, East Coast, particularly Washington, D.C. and Cincinnati, Ohio. There's got to be mixed emotions. I mean, people in Washington who were very happy for Jay Schrader's success Monday night can't be particularly pleased about what he's done today. You know, it's just been such a long day for him. Nothing has gone well. Four interceptions. And it's, it's one of those situations that you just uh, you hope you work your way through. That's Icky Woods with the football, and Cincinnati continuing their drive here. Total offense, we have Cincinnati through three quarters with 413 yards of total offense, and as you see, the Raiders with only 216. That just goes to show back to the dominance of the Bengals' offensive line, letting them do whatever they want to do offensively. So Esiason brings him out here. First down and 10, 45-yard line, and he's still throwing the ball. Throws it downfield, and a great adjustment on the ball by Eddie Brown, and that'll be a first down for Cincinnati. Mike Haynes had the coverage, but you'll get a chance to see the great adjustment that Eddie Brown, he almost had to do a 360 to turn around and catch the football. Well, when things go right, they really go right for you. Eddie Brown in motion coming up, running to the corner. Mike Haynes in the coverage. There's a little bump, just turns around, and that's great athletic ability. But not a great design play by the Bengals. Jim Riggs is standing in the same area. But as we said, when you're hot, you're hot. And there's Eddie Brown backing into the catch as Mike Haynes tries to take a swap at it. And the ball spotted just inside the Raiders' 17-yard line. A hard pill to swallow for Al Davis today, I can tell you that. Dickie Woods trips at the 15 and goes down. Eight of about three. Howie Long has not had one of his better games, although in Howie's defense, he just doesn't go into a football game that he's not double teamed, Kenny. Well, and you have to give Joe Walter a lot of credit. A couple of weeks ago, he's facing Reggie White, the NFL sack leader last year, shut him out. He was only in on one tackle of the day. Joe coming up with another big day against Howie Long. They have not distinguished themselves today in the Raider front seven. Long, Pacal, great football players. I don't have to tell you about Millen, Robinson, Martin, and Martin. They've all certainly established themselves as great National Football League players, but the Bengals today have just simply blown them out of there, and they lead it 38-7. Second and eight. Messias and a bullet. Five. Touchdown, Ira Hillary. 
Everybody's getting into the act today. Well, Esiason just has thrown the football. He has had eight different receivers today. And what an afternoon for this young man. Again, Boomer drops back. This time going to receive a little pressure up in the middle, but throws a strike to Ira Hiller, who makes a nice little move to score. Eddie Anderson tries to come over and make the hit before the goal line, but Ira, Ira Hillary, touchdown. And he broke from the grasp of Dennis Price for the touchdown. Reach will attempt the extra point. Ira Hillary with only two catches this season. That one for a touchdown to the Bengals, big over the Raiders. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. By City Corp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. Sam Nover and Ken Anderson back at the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Cincinnati Bengals have scored a touchdown on their last six possessions. Six possessions in a row. I have no idea if it's a record, but it, it certainly uh, should raise some eyebrows. That one, 71 yards in six plays. And this kick, I believe, went out of bounds. And a penalty flag is down. Let's take a look one more time at Boomer to Ira Hillary. You can see him dropping back. The pressure has been nil on him all day today, but there you see he takes the hit and goes down in the grasp of Lyndon King and Rod Martin, or I should say Jerry Robinson. And I'm sure that's what Sam White is thinking. I got to get my quarterback out of the game. Now. I don't want him to get hit anymore. Esaias in 21 of 28, that's 75%, 332 yards, three touchdowns. Whatever his NFL leading passing rating was going in, I think it was 104, it's got to jump, jump by leaps and bounds after this performance. From the 35-yard line after the out-of-bounds kick by Lee Johnson. Schrader, complete on the near sideline. Mervin Fernandez, Swervin Mervin, gets the first down up around the 46. And so the Raider fans with the mock applause here. They have not had much to cheer about. This guy, anybody who has known him or followed his career, has got to be thrilled to death. He was the most maligned coach in the NFL last year. Uh, just one gaffe after another, one problem after another. Fifth year as head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. He is restoring and justifying the faith that Paul Brown had in him. And uh, it just, uh, it's remarkable what's, what's happened in a turnaround situation and for a 43-year-old head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. As we have a personal foul in the Bengals, and Sam White's not happy about that. You're winning big. You don't need cheap shots like that along the side. I know 15-yarders. So from the 40-yard line, the Raiders trying to do something to gain respectability here. They trail it 45 to 7 at home. Schrader blocked, knocked right back into his face. I believe it was Eddie Edwards or Fulcher, they say. Well, he, what doesn't he do on this team? Well, and again, the Bengals come with a strong safety blitz to get in there. Uh, the Bengals not conceding anything right here. Jay Schrader rolls a little bit to his left. And there's David Fulcher going up. He's being blocked, but he gets a hand up. So Ill illegal contact against Eric Thomas. That'll be a first down despite the block by Fulcher. You just can't put a damper on the performance that he's put in today. Two interceptions, the block, numerous tackles. He is just uh, everything that Sam Weish uh, says he is. He's had a great year this year. Dirk Schoner starting to throw on the sideline, so uh, I think the bullpen will be to the rescue the next time Cincinnati gets the football. And we still have 13 minutes and 10 seconds to play in this game. In and out of the hands of Willie Gold. Well, Schrader that time put it right on the money. Well, you knew that was going to happen. The way a game goes like today, you throw a good pass finally, you get a guy in the end zone, you know it's not going to be caught. Mike Shanahan not very happy with the way things have gone today. Jay Schrader dropping back, looks left, picks out Galt on the right. He's got inside position on Lewis Phillips. Off right his off his shoulder, shoulder pad. pad. Right off the pad.
second down 10. The ball spotted right on the 35 of the Bengals. Two penalties have helped this drive by the Raiders. Unless you think they've done it on their own. That pass was intended out on the near side for Marcus Allen. He was held. But no penalty call. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Los Angeles Raiders, all rights reserved. Thank you very much. <laughs> Read as it was written. Third down 10 now for Mr. Schrader and the Raiders. Well, if they're Schrader's Raiders, they're going to have to do some revamping before Miami comes in next Sunday. Jay's on the run again. Fires it downfield and just threw that one away. Barney Bussey had some pressure on him. So did Jim Scow. Trey Junkin, the intended receiver, but this has just been a very long afternoon for Mr. Schrader. And we're seeing the Bengals' defense not conceding anything here. It's third down. They're coming with the safety blitz off the corner to chase Jay Schrader down, force him to throw the ball away. Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator. That is not he. You are looking at Mike Shanahan. He may not want to be Mike Shanahan right now, <laughs> but he is. Well, we'll call him Dick LeBeau. <laughs> 11.52 to play fourth quarter. The Bengals have had a dream afternoon. Three touchdowns in the second quarter, two more in the third, one here in the fourth, six straight possessions. Schrader in the grasp and control of David Grant, the youngster out of West Virginia. That'll be a sack back in the neighborhood of the 40-yard line. David Grant's third sack of the season. He had two against the Pittsburgh Steelers a couple of weeks ago. And there you see Schrader dropping back, and there's nowhere for him to go. David Grant makes the play. The Bengals have made the plays all afternoon. <laughs> Esiason is done for the day. He's got the baseball cap on, the gum in the mouth. You'd like to be in that position as a quarterback. You get to take the rest of the afternoon off. And Turk Schonert coming in. And Turk a veteran. He's been in the National Football League nine years. He's been a great backup for the Bengals. All he wants to do is hand off right now. He doesn't want to get hit. Did not take a snap all last year has not taken a snap, I don't believe, Kenny, this year. Not at all. So this is his first snap since 1986 in a regular season game. And does just what Mr. Anderson instructed him to do, giving the ball to Stanford Jennings. You know, Kenny, I was talking a moment ago about Paul Brown. Um, it, it dawns on me, too, he makes virtually every trip with the Bengals. This is the one, I guess, one trip a year he stays home. He chose this one to stay home and watch his club from a more uh, objective point of view. and and. I hope you're enjoying it, Mr. Brown. You're, you're <laughs> certainly going to miss a great flight back home to Cincinnati. It will be a quick one. Yeah. You know, a little tough to come to the West Coast sometimes, but the trip goes very well on the way home when you win. Well, he came out here so often and went back disillusioned, upset, frustrated. It's a shame he can't uh, enjoy this one, but I'm sure he's having a great day in Cincinnati. On second down, the give again to Wilson. Clock continues to move under 12 minutes to play in the game. Let's go back and update the scores for you. The Jets still leading. Denver has increased their lead by a field goal. Nothing new. Danny Marino must be having a nice day. And that Miami defense having a great day. Rams get a touchdown, making it close in Anaheim. And the 49ers still leading the Lions. Those are the games in progress. And again, if you joined us late, the Bengals have scored touchdowns on their last six possessions and lead it 45 to 7 over a Raider defense that has no idea which end is up to them. Just a beleaguered secondary. Turk Schonert on the move, gets into Los Angeles territory and down at the 45-yard line. Rod Martin was the man who forced him down. This is not the way Turk Schonert wants to get into a football game, I don't believe, Ken. Well, no, but this is a great opportunity for the Bengal coaches now to play a guy like Turk Schoenert, who didn't take a snap last season, hasn't played this season. If the unfortunate situation comes down where Boomer Esiason does get hurt, you would like your backup to have a little bit of experience. Now, at least he gets to get out on the field, take some snaps, be comfortable in a game situation. This is a homecoming of sorts for Turk. Uh, of course, he isn't from the Los Angeles area, but he did his play his college ball off the coast of Stanford. So he's back out in California again. Nothing there for Wilson at all. 
Greg Townsend, 93 on the top. Bill Pickell on, is that Pickell on the bottom? That's number Greg Townsend on the top. No, it was, uh, well, he is also hurt, Wilson. This is the one thing you don't want to do with a 45-7 lead is get anybody injured. And we see Dave Smith coming in for the Bengals, a backup tackle behind Anthony Munoz. So while there's a stoppage of play on the field, ten and a half minutes to play, all Cincinnati will return to the Coliseum after this. And we're back live at the Coliseum. The Bengals running back Stanley Wilson is still down. And we're going to take a look how it happened. He takes the handoff, a little counter play, brings it up into the line of scrimmage. Nowhere for him to go. Greg Townsend, Matt Millen on it. He just gets twisted a little bit. And you can't see really what happened there. We don't want to speculate, but they've got a stretcher that they're coming out on the field now with. We certainly hope it's nothing serious for Stanley Wilson. Got high load, and uh, as Kenny indicated, got twisted just a bit. So we'll return to the L.A. Coliseum in just a moment. Timeout remains on the field. Back at the Coliseum, uh, the Raiders' managing partner, Al Davis, uh, certainly can't like what he sees here. His club trailing 45 to 7 after staging that dramatic second half comeback in Denver on Monday night. And the Bengals can't like what they see here. Stanley Wilson having to be taken off the field on a stretcher. Uh, no report preliminarily here as to exactly what's the matter, but we can look at it one more time. It, it, it looked to be rather innocent enough. Yeah, it's the old high-low. One guy's got you high, one guy's got you low, and you go down. And certainly don't want to speculate what this injury could be. And we certainly hope it's nothing serious to Stanley Wilson, who's just uh, overcome a lot of adversity in his career and has come back to play very well for the Bengals this year. In his fourth year out of Oklahoma, though, those are his stats on the day, but they don't begin to tell the story of his value to this football club. He was suspended, as many of you know, for the entire 1987 season. Also missed all of 1985 with injuries. So it has been a career plagued with misfortune. And he was just starting to make some vital contributions to the club. And we hope for him and certainly his family that it's not a serious injury. Stanford Jennings to about the 40-yard line. Matt Millen is the man who made the tackle. You know, Stanley Wilson, one of the players having a lot of family here at home. His father was at practice yesterday. And that is a nice chance for a lot of the players back in the Midwest to come out to the West Coast where they have some roots and see some family and friends. And a lot of times coaches worry about it. Do you spend too much time socially? socializing with your family and obviously the Bengals uh, had their mind on business on this trip well they lost James Brooks early in the game I told you at the time at halftime he had 77 yards in total offense to show you how the Cincinnati offense spreads it around Wilson had 47 yards carrying 33 receiving for 80 yards total offense so they have been two valuable cogs in this Bengals machine as Icky Woods sticks his nose into the pile at about the 40-yard line and again, let's check the scores around the league. Nothing new there. Those three are still the same. Midway in the fourth quarter. 27-20. The Rams trying to get back at the Cardinals here in Anaheim. Not here in Anaheim, but not far away. And the Lions have scored a touchdown to make it close at San Francisco. And now the Bengals really hurting at running back. If uh, Stanley is hurt, Stanley Wilson hurt seriously. James Brooks, uh, he's going to be out for a while. That leaves him with only two running backs on the roster. So uh, some moves may have to be made next week for the Bengals. So although they're winning big, it's been a costly victory for them. Something to obviously concern Sam Weish. So if the Bengals, this is what the AFC Central will look like if the Bengals hold this lead. I feel almost silly even saying that. Let's assume they've won it 5 nothing. Houston lost today. Cleveland beat the Steelers. And so their lead will be two games over the Oilers and Browns, which is a healthy lead five games into the season in this division. Kenny, you played in it for 16 years. You know better than anybody else. Right, and the three teams trailing the Bengals, all with starting quarterbacks hurt, with Bubby Brewster being injured today. Exactly. Tim Brown at single safety at the 10, awaiting the punt by Scott Fulhage. You got time! You got time! He's going to field the ball at the eight-yard line. Near sideline. And brings it out to the 25. A 17-yard return by Tim Brown, who is just exciting every time he touches the football. 8-13 to play. You know the way this game started out? With Full Haig shanking the first punt of the day. 11 yards, giving the Raiders excellent field position. 
We thought that might be a portent of things to come, but it's been completely the opposite. And then they decide not to kick the field goal. They go for it. They make fourth down, but then they have the pass intercepted by Lewis Phillips. So the complexion of the game changed very early today. From the 25-yard line, Raiders are still going with Jay Schrader at quarterback. Smith, 35, and Marcus Allen, 32, with the backs behind him. October 10th, this club will get Bo Jackson. Allen avoids a couple of tackles, and they keep right, inbounds, although I think Marcus did most of the work there to stay inbounds. David Grant is the man who made the stop. Well, you know, you've been in situations like this on the good and on the bad, and believe me, no matter what side you're in, you just want the clock to run I was going to say the Raiders want this game to be over just as badly as the Bengals. Just run out the clock and let's go home and forget about this. The AFC Western Division will have a new leader. The Seattle Seahawks will be at 3-2. and two. San Diego's game still in progress. And, of course, the Raiders now will drop to 2-3. and three. Seven and a half minutes to play. That is a world of time in a close football game. It is an eternity <laughs> in a blowout. Schrader, too tall. Eric Thomas, the coverage, his intended receiver was Mervin Hernandez in front of the Cincinnati Bears. Again, Jay Schrader just not having a great afternoon, and he's a very good quarterback. And here you see Fernandez going down the field. He stops, turns around, the ball is high. Don't hang me up today. And there's the shot by Eric Thomas. And receivers don't like to get hung up. And the Cardinals have scored again, so they lead the Rams 34 to 20, fourth quarter. And should the Rams lose, there will be only one unbeaten team in the National Football League, and you're looking at it in orange and white, not in black and silver. You got a 27, Marquez! Schrader from his own 27. Gets out of there. He's got trouble. Throws it downfield. Great catch! Excellent catch up around the 35 as Willie Galt came back to help out his troubled quarterback and made a wonderful diving catch at about the 36. It was Barney Bussey who had the heat on Jay Schrader. Again, the, the Bengals putting pressure on the quarterback. We see Willie Goff releasing off Eric Phillips, a little contact there, breaking across the middle. Phillips falls down. Willie Goff seeing that Jay Schrader's in trouble, comes back to the football and makes a nice catch. Those are tough to make, coming back low, scooping it off the turf. And Jay Schrader hit again by Barney Bussey, and uh, Barney Bussey, a big factor in their nickel defenses, and he likes to blitz a lot that time, getting to Dre Schrader, Jay Schrader. So it was good enough for the first down. The Raiders keep their drive alive with 6.45 to play, and I imagine Shanahan and Schrader with the timeout here are simply just talking about the fact, get something going for next week. Forget about the ball game. Just get some continuity back with the offense so that when we come out here against the Dolphins, we'll will look like we know what we're doing. Yeah, you just, you, you build for next week. You're exactly right, Sam. And put a couple first downs together. Execute the offense like we'd like you to execute it. Get more comfortable out there. And that way, let's write off this week. But now let's start preparing for next week. From the 36-yard line. Denver continues to lead San Diego. If that score holds up, then the Chargers will be with the Raiders at 2-3. and three. There'll be a real log jam there. And the Broncos will be two and three. Up at the 46, caught by Marcus Allen. The Raiders with three Heisman Trophy winners, Marcus Allen, of course, being one of them, Bo Jackson and Tim Brown. So they have a celebrated trio. What is the prognosis for this football team? Knowing, Kenny, that they're not going to get their injured defensive backs back in the lineup real soon. Well, you've got to find some way to get the offense in high gear. Use your offensive weapons, and you've got to get to the opposing quarterbacks. You can't give guys like Boomer Science all day to throw the football. First and ten for the Raiders again, up around their 47-yard line. Schrader, home run ball, simultaneous possession, or is it an interception? It appears to be Willie Galt was the intended receiver. And Ricky Dixon comes away with the ball. And I believe they're going to give it to Willie Galt. Is that, is that a simultaneous possession like the one in Cleveland the other day? I believe that's what they're going to call. And Ricky Dixon, the Bengals' number one draft choice this year, getting a little playing time. Because that makes an apparent good play. Runs stride for stride with Willie Galt. 
see if we can't somehow uh, demonstrate this. Well, here you see Jay Schrader dropping back into the pocket here. You see the ball thrown up for grab. Ricky Dixon, good position. And it's a tough call from this angle. Their backs are to us, but they're wrestling for the ball. And they've given it to Gold. It is definitely Raiders football. Here's another angle of it. I can't tell. No, you can't because they just went down to the ground together and in apparent simultaneous possession. And if that's the case, the ball is given to the offense. And, and, and officials agreed immediately. See, they both signaled that way. So there was no confusion whatsoever down there. And they made the call to their credit. 4.46 to play. It'll be first and goal for the Raiders now inside the 10 at about the 9.5. And, and Los Angeles with a chance to get on the board again. Their only touchdown has come on a 65-yard scoring strike from that man, Jay Schrader, to the rookie Tim Brown from Notre Dame. Well, actually, they've got so many offensive weapons they just haven't been able to use. I think one of their concerns is their offensive line and giving Jay Schrader a time to throw the football. And certainly Al Davis has made a lot of big trades to beef up this offense with the likes of Galt and Lofton and Jay Schrader. Well, the thing that Al Davis did that was so out of character in hiring Mike Shanahan is that he went outside the organization. It's the first time in the history of the Raider organization that a head coach has been hired from outside. And Davis readily admitted that he not only liked his youth, meaning Shanahan's youth and his enthusiasm, but he wanted some fresh ideas. After all, the Raiders were coming off their worst season in 25 years. A 5-10 and 10 football team last year. Play action. First and goal. Fires it high and wide of everybody. He had gold on the end line, but he threw it out of the field to play. It'll be second down and goal to go. And so he's gotten a coach who has been, for all intents and purposes, John Elway's quarterback coach the last couple of years. Which may be affecting John Elway this year, Absolutely. you might add. Absolutely. Absolutely. But again, I think, you know, expecting more point production for all these weapons. You know, uh, you know Willie Golf came over from Chicago. James Lofton from Green Bay, I mean, these are high-priced guys, uh, big-time receivers. Jay Schrader, they gave up a lot to get get him and uh, with Lachey an offensive tackle, which they might need. Vance Mueller, immediately following our football coverage, we will present coverage of the closing ceremony of the game to the 24th Olympiad from Seoul, Korea. So stay with us. Out of the field of play. Caught by Andy Parker, but way out of the field of play. So it'll be third down in goal to goal Raiders. So again, coming up immediately following our broadcast, we will have the closing ceremonies for you, the 24th Olympiad from Seoul, South Korea, right here on NBC. Well, the Bengals football team feeling very good about themselves right now, that, that they finally put a football game together offensively and defensively. And if, if there's been a downside of this game, it's been the punting of Scott Fulhag, whose only real good game this year was last week against the Cleveland Browns. The one thing about Shanahan that boggles my mind is that he has never been a head coach in college or pro ball. I mean, I can understand. So the timeout, uh, Schrader elects to take a timeout here, and you're looking at Mike Shanahan. Never before a head coach. Can you imagine his first head coaching job, that of the illustrious and celebrated Los Angeles Raiders? But the fact of the matter is, that has been Al Davis's way. He did it with John Roush. Uh, he did it with John Madden. They had never been head coaches prior to that. Did it with Tom Flory. But as you said, bringing some new blood into the organization. And I had a chance to meet with Mike Shanahan before he got the job skiing out in Colorado this past winter. I know he was excited about coming to this organization. All right, let's look at all the scores now of games played today in the NFL. Early games final, the Bills lose their first of the year. The Eagles come from 9-0 to beat Houston. New England gets a late touchdown run by Doug Flutie to beat Indianapolis. The Steelers lose the game to the Browns and their quarterback, Bubby Brister. That's three quarterback starter, starters in the AFC Central who are out for how long, I don't know. Seattle beats Atlanta. The Redskins got two late touchdowns but gave away too much too early and lose to the Giants again. Tampa Bay, a late field goal to beat Green Bay. The Chiefs have come back to tie the Jets. Denver leading San Diego and the Vikings get on the board. And the Phoenix Cardinals are blowing out the Rams. Third and goal to go. Raiders looting, losing 45-7. Allen to the five. It'll be fourth and goal from the five-yard line. Ray Horton is the man who made the stop. 
I think one thing Mike Shanahan is thinking about right here is that although the Raiders can be beat bad today, you know, they're not, they're only falling game behind in the AFC West. Nobody is taking charge of that division and nobody running away with it, so they're still in good shape. Other than Seattle, everybody else, two and three. Denver wins on four rich Carlos field goals, 12 nothing the final. Denver beats San Diego. Charger offense having problems. This is fourth down and goal to go Raiders. 352 to play in the game. Schrader, quarterback raw. Touchdown Raiders. Schrader did it his way. <laughs> oh, a gutsy call by the Raiders with your quarterback on fourth down. To, to run into a situation like that. A replica of our NBC Super Bowl flashback in which Ken Anderson did the same thing to get into the end zone in 82. But I was much quicker than that. <laughs> well, I know that's going to make Jay Schrader feel a little bit better this afternoon. There's not going to... A lot uh, you can do to console a guy in a situation like that, but... Uh, I tried to put Chris Barr in Cincinnati earlier today, as you may remember. He probably wishes he were there. Kick by Barr is up, and it is good. And so his second conversion makes it a 45 to 14 football game. Okay, we're going to see if we can't get another look at this, Jay Schrader. Here you're going to see it. The defensive lineman coming to the outside, and Jay Schrader just going to drop back and find that way right up the middle on the quarterback draw. And Bengals defensive lineman thinking past theirs. The seam, he's got a couple of blockers. You're going to take a hit at the goal line, but you'll pay that price for a touchdown. Just like you drew it up. I always remember every time I called the quarterback draw, the defense is always yelling, watch the quarterback draw. And <laughs> 75, excuse me, Kenny, 75 yards, nine plays, four minutes and 29 seconds. And the Raiders score for the first time since the 65-yard bomb from Schrader to Brown midway through the second quarter. 344 to play in this ball game. I would think mercifully for the Raiders who would like to get out of here and the Bengals who would like to get home and celebrate. They will be 5-0 after today, and by the looks of things in Anaheim, they will be the only unbeaten team in the National Football League. And as I mentioned earlier, they have not started 4-0 since 1975, and in that year, Ken, as you well remember, you went 6-0 in Paul Brown's last coaching year. Finished 11-3 that season, and who do we play in the playoffs? The Raiders. Who beat us in uh, and lost? Yeah, and lost. Chris Barr to do the kicking off, and the Bengals are primed for the onside kick. Barr recovers his own kick, and the Raiders will have the football. That was almost too easy. He was never challenged. Well, a play Chris Barr has worked on when he was in Cincinnati, just kicking it, recovering it yourself. You don't expect the kicker to go after the ball. You see it time after time, kicking it to the sidelines. A little surprise for the Bengals. As we see, Chris just pooching it down the middle, chasing it 10 yards. The Bengals playing awfully loose in that situation. That wasn't even a challenge for Chris. So the Raiders' hopes are still alive and flickering. <laughs> <laughs> 3.39 to go, and they get it back again. San Francisco is final now. They've beaten Detroit 20 to 13. 49ers struggling through some games here. At the 46 yard line, Schrader brings him out again. Over the middle, incomplete intended for Steve Smith. Let's go to Len Verma now at NFL Live in New York for another update. Len? Well, Sam, if you want a close game, go cross country to the Meadowlands. 51 seconds left in regulation. Steve DeBerg, eight yards to Emil Harry. That ties the game. The Chiefs and Jets, 17-17. Seven seconds to go. Jets have the ball in regulation. Back to you. Okay, Len, so the Chiefs showing a little bit of spark. Jets hanging in there. Here it's 45-14 with 3.35 to play. From the 46-yard line, second down and 10 Raiders. Schrader has gone all the way. Obviously, uh, they'll give him as much work as possible. The score will not dictate how much Jay Schrader plays. He is the man for the foreseeable future. You don't give up a football player like Jim Lachey, and that obviously created another weakness on the offensive line when they did that, Ken. Yeah, but I think, you know, 
Jay's had a tough day today, but let's not give any impression that he's not a fine quarterback in the National Football League. He's done too many things with the Redskins in his past. He just needs to feel a little bit more comfortable in this situation, learn the tools he's got to work with, and to be quite honest, the Raiders' offensive line has to do a little bit better job. 14 of 37 for Schrader, 205 yards, one touchdown, but he got killed today with four interceptions. And in all, the Raiders turned the ball over five times. It's pretty hard to win in this league, or in any league for that matter, when you do that. His stats were not that impressive, actually, in his victory over Denver. He threw for 242 yards, but his percentage of completions was not all that impressive. But what a second half he had. Throws it downfield, and oh, he caught it on his back. Willie Gold inside the 20. Gold turned around for the ball. Eric Thomas kept running by him. He fell on his back, and he caught the ball while lying on his back. What an acrobatic catch by Willie Galt. It just gives you an idea of his tremendous athletic ability. You see him turning up for the ball, losing his footing, and there it comes right down into him. To Schrader's credit, he put the ball right on the money. It's tough to hit a guy land on his back. Did you ever try that? I think so. No, I haven't. From the 19-yard line. And Schrader stops the clock by throwing the ball into the ground. Now, that rule... That could be intentionally absolutely. grounded. Absolutely. That rule is in effect if you're not challenged by a pass rusher. What? There were people in the vicinity. Right, and I think the rule is you have to come away from the line of scrimmage in one continuous motion and ground the ball in that fashion. That time, he had already taken his drop, saw nobody open, and then attempted to do it. But it was not called by referee Jim Tunney, so he accomplishes his purpose in stopping the clock. Once more, let's see Willie Gold on his back with the circus catch. The sun's in his eyes. You can tell by the shadow he's looking right up into the sun as he made the catch. Remarkable concentration. Second and ten. Smith in the slot and out of the way. Oh! Out of nowhere. On the blitz. Barney Bussey, number 27. He has come a few times today and been very successful. So when Dick LeBeau has chosen to use that corner safety blitz, it's worked very effectively. And to be quite frank with you right now, the Bengals' defense doesn't want to give up another touchdown. They're playing the old statistic game. They were riddled last year as we see Barney Bussey coming in. Uh, statistics, okay, gave up a lot of points. This year they're working very hard. on This is a source of pride for that defensive unit. We're not going to let anybody in our end zone. And even though the game is out of control here, they're playing it to keep... The Raiders out of the end zone. They're not going to let them score. Third and 17. Schrader, quick release. And that time, Galt tried to adjust but could not get to the football. Good coverage by Eric Thomas. Boy, these corners for Cincinnati have played a whale of a football game today. And played with such great confidence. It was last year in Eric Thomas' second game. He was riddled by Jerry Rice and the San Francisco 49ers for a bunch of touchdowns. Lost a little bit of that confidence. This year he's come back, had a lot of success early, and has played very well with a lot of confidence. Schrader calls a timeout here at the 2-11 mark in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look around the National Football League for our headline makers now. Week number five of the NFL. I told you about Doug Flutie. Can you believe this? Scores a winning touchdown. Also threw a touchdown pass in that 21-17 win. Buffalo, zero yards rushing against the Bears. Their defense is back. And I believe the Bears had the top rushing defense in the National Football League going into this game. That's the brawl in Philadelphia, and I mentioned Philadelphia had their first two punts blocked by the Oilers, who jumped out to a 9-0 lead. Dexter Manley, first four sacks of the season, not enough. Two late touchdown passes to Ricky Sanders, also not enough. And the Giants win as the flame burns on here at the scene of the 1984 Olympic Games. Tonight, of course, you'll see the closing ceremony following our broadcast. Except on the West Coast, coverage of the closing ceremony of the Games of the 24th Olympiad from Seoul, South Korea, so we invite you to stay tuned. You know, we talked about the Bengals' defense being better scoring-wise this year. The Raiders have already given up 100 points. That's last in the AFC, and certainly 45 today is not going to help them. Fourth and 17. Trader threw it away to the sideline, almost threw it up to the seven. Jim Scow and Skip McClendon, who have played very well today, had the pressure on, and that will be just about it for the Raiders as they turn the ball over on downs at 2.01 to go here in the fourth quarter. And Sam Wise, obviously, now with 
not even having to take a snap as they start that 45 second clock or they will momentarily yeah but Sam White's although the game totally in hand very concerned about his running back situation with the injury to Stanley Wilson we've not had a report on that yet James Brooks with a fractured wrist he may be out for a while so uh, although it's been a great victory for the Bengals on the road here in Los Angeles it may prove to be a very costly one down the road well they will on the change of possession have to snap the football so I stand corrected and this will get him inside the two minute warning Jennings they'll have some problems to work out with their running game uh, certainly when they get back to Cincinnati so the clock stops now and there will be a two-minute warning the Cincinnati Bengals will have their fifth victory of the year and in the first five weeks of the season they have eclipsed their total output of victories last year when they went four and eleven hard to believe but true we'll return to the LA Coliseum in just a moment It's time now for the Most Valuable Player Award, sponsored by Budweiser. And today's MVPs are Boomer Esiason on your left and David Fulcher from the Cincinnati Bengals. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. Co-MVPs. Couldn't ask for a better pair. Fulcher to the defense, but Esiason was to the offense today. They both had brilliant days. And as we check the report card for Cincinnati, they certainly get an A-plus, Kenny Anderson. Uh, you can understand Asias in a magnificent day throwing the football. His field generalship was outstanding. Wilson had a good day. He spread the ball around to eight different receivers, did Asias. Defensively, Fulcher had a block pass, two interceptions, and a slew of tackles. You just couldn't ask for better performances. It's tough to pick out all the statistics today that have looked good for the Bengals. On the other hand, the Raiders. Schrader, not, not a good report card for this club today, and that's why they're losing 45-14. D plus, C minus maybe. Third down and eight to go on the carry. While we have a moment, let me thank our support crew who did an outstanding job. Stan Ataki, our statistician, Chuck Panama, and Dan Wallace, our spotters. And Kenny Anderson, to you, a big round of applause. This is your NBC debut as an analyst. I think you did a great job, and you didn't have an easy game in a blowout like this. You were absolutely super. Well, guys like you make it easy for me, Sam. You're real I, was, close. I wasn't looking for a plug, no. but that's nice of you to say. It's been fun, and I've really enjoyed it, and the weather's been great out here. It's a place to come, yeah. isn't it? You found out where the nice assignments were. Todd Christensen heading for the dressing room. We never did get a report. He has not played at all in the second half. I guess he had a, a, was a knee strain, perhaps. lower leg strain I am now told so uh, but he appeared to be walking all right which has to be good news for Raiders fans the Wilson injury was a lower spine injury and he was taken for x-rays so we'll have to await the uh, the verdict on that but Stanley Wilson had to be taken off the field on a stretcher the kick by full Haig rolls dead at about the 36 with 52 seconds left to play and what is this come on guys this one's over <laughs> Jack Simon our director said it looks like Russell Maney five Eddie Anderson of the Raiders Ray Horton of the Bengals the flag is down and of course Kenny and I thank our, our support crew in the truck Jack and David Stern our producer uh, for providing all of their much needed assistance the Cincinnati Bengals will come out of here with their first victory ever on the West Coast not a, against the Raiders against the Raiders is what I meant of course I meant in Oakland and Los Angeles I think the, the last time that the Bengals won in the Coliseum has to be back in about 1978 we beat the Rams here uh, that year this is you know it's been tough for the Bengals to win on the West Coast this will not sit well with Al Davis I'm sure no, when your team comes out, and sometimes you can tolerate a loss, but you can't tolerate a performance like this. There hasn't been a lot oh, of things. Going on. Three, four, three, four, three, four, five. Well, apparently the Raiders were more guilty than was Cincinnati until they walk off the yardage against Los Angeles, and they'll begin now at their own 26-yard line with just 52 ticks left, and you look at the total yardage, and the Bengals have not really done much their last couple of possessions. And they're at 500 yards, or nearly, 
and not to make excuses for the Raiders, but they came off that emotional victory last Monday night against the Broncos, and tough to get up the second week in a row. They've got the short work week. Good point. Now they're good enough, and they'll bounce back. Schrader from the shotgun on first down. Throws short of his intended receiver. Another flag down intended for Andy Parker. Here's another final. Phoenix has knocked the L.A. Rams from the ranks of the unbeaten. The final 41-27. Greg Bell had a couple of, in fact, three touchdown runs for the Rams in a losing cause. But holding against Rory Graves, but the Cardinals do it, and so but one unbeaten team, and the Bengals at 5-0 and are that unbeaten team. And I think not many people finished, the, pick, finished or I should say, picked the Bengals to finish higher than third in their division. And most everybody picking them fourth, so certainly a surprise team this year in the National Football League. Cincinnati home to the New York Jets next Sunday. Jets playing well. They will have to reappraise their feelings about the Cincinnati Bengals, those so-called foot football experts. Schrader, downfield for Fernandez. He has to stop and come back for it, and he takes it away from the defender. Great catch by Mervin Fernandez. He took it right out of the grasp of the defender. Thomas was back there. I think Daryl Smith was also back there, number 25. Of course, Daryl Smith. Came off his 30-day suspension right, today. Right, suspended in this four game. Here you see that Daryl Smith, Solomon Wilcox, and Fernandez takes the ball right away from him. Great catch. And again, it just demonstrates the athletic ability that the Raiders have and their weapons on offense. And, uh, too good not to score more points than they have this afternoon. So they get a first down at the Cincinnati 25-yard line. Again, the clock stopped with 30 seconds to play. Raiders using what I believe is their last time out. So they will uh, try to take it in from here. What many people hope is their last time out. Do I see a Bengal sign in enemy territory? <laughs> Nobody beat Cincy, NBC. Well, even a losing cause, if you add in this bomb, which comes in slop time, Jay Schrader's over 300 yards throwing the football. Well, that, that's why staff is so deceiving. Yeah, well, you know. and I was in a lot of those games in the late 70s when the Bengals were a bad football team, and my stats didn't look too bad because I'm throwing for a couple hundred yards in the fourth quarter when the game's already decided. First and 10 now to 25. Oh, and he got dragged down. He had 15 yards of daylight. The saving tackle made by Skip McClendon, who just dragged him down, number 72. Or else Schrader could have gotten very close to the goal line. And Skip McClendon coming in for the Bengals, replacing Eddie Edwards, their fine uh, defensive end this year. Eddie's still playing in a backup position, but Skip is the guy that's made the transition. Fernandez could not hold on to that one with six seconds to play. So he'll have one more shot at the end zone here. The Miami Dolphins and Dan Marino, a great aerial attack comes into town. But the, before today, the uh, Dolphins have not been able to stop anybody, but they were doing a number on the Vikings. And the Vikings, you know, a real tough thing. As you all know, Mike Ditka conceded that division to the Vikings yes. with the Bears. So. Well, verbally, he has. Yeah. Only verbally. At the 24-yard line. This should be the last play of the game. Caught touchdown Raiders. And who else but Mervin Fernandez who got him down there? And I lied. There's a second left on the <laughs> Nice Mervin. throw by Schrader to his traffic. And nice catch by Fernandez. Spent five years in the Canadian Football League before coming down to the Raiders. Was a 10th round draft choice for the Raiders back in 83, but chose to play in Canada to start his career. Here's, here's the gun of Jay Schrader. Dropping back, throwing a strike. So there is hope. There's always next week for the Los Angeles Raiders. He threw it right in between Billups and Horton, 24 yards on the touchdown pass. And so uh, the Raiders will score again and make it look a little bit more respectable. But the 42,594 who are in attendance here today know that this game was never close from the second quarter on. It has been all Cincinnati. And again, we go back to that first series of the game where Shanahan chose not to go for the shirt field goal. They made it on fourth down, but then Schrader was picked off by Lewis Phillips. The Bengals and from that point on took control of the game. You know, Kenny, it dawned on me too. This is a very tough sell in Los Angeles. The Raiders with that 
wonderful victory and Jay Schrader making his L.A. debut, you'd think they'd, they'd come run into the Coliseum. However, only 42,000, but I should mention the Rams are playing today and the Dodgers are playing today, and they take precedence apparently over the Raiders in many circumstances. We will jump to that game just as soon as ours is final. They are in overtime, Kansas City and the Jets, as Len Berman told you moments ago. And we will join that game just as soon as this kickoff here from Chris Barr. I know Chris Barr will not do the same onside kick again. The Bengals will be watching. He will get drilled if he tries it again. <laughs> fool me once, but don't fool me twice. You're right. Well, he didn't even go after this one. It's touched, deflected, goes out of bounds, and nobody possessed the ball. They've still got a second left. They still have one second left on the clock. This game is not final. The Up Bengals with the day's ball. yardage are now averaging 411 yards of total offense a game. Illegally touching the ball. That is first in the NFL. Five yards in return. Illegally touching the ball before the 10 yards. Or they just won't let the Raiders get out. They won't <laughs> do it mercifully. <laughs> They're going to prolong this game. thing. And there's the final over. gun, finally. Thank you. Final this is all over. So our final score, the Cincinnati Bengals 45, the LA Raiders 14. For Ken Anderson, this is Sam Nover. Now let's join Kansas City and the New York Jets.